Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first, well, my very first, I guess. Everybody else is doing it, too. Very first non-developer streams for Hearts of Iron 4. Can you all hear me okay? Excellent. Rogers, why are you watching on Twitch? It's just so inferior. But I'll do both. I'll do both. Some people like it. I don't know. All right. Let's do this. You guys ready? I'm ready. All right. I'm going to hit a button and let's make sure everything works. There it is. Huzzah. All right. So, unlike Daniel, I did not get to try this five times before. <laughs> but I did get to try it once this evening. Uh, and it worked out okay, because Germany decided not to invade until 1942. So I sit around doing nothing for an awful long time. I think I'm going to try invading Finland, if that uh, happens again, just so we get something going on. But while we're here, uh, everybody probably wants to know what the hell's going on in the options menu. It's pretty simple. I mean, they showed it a little bit. You can turn off 3D units. Everybody cares about that. I don't know why. I think they look fine. Everybody knows you can also turn on NATO counters. Now, the cooperative button here, apparently you cannot have multiple players controlling one nation, I assume in multiplayer, otherwise wouldn't it be here. So this, if you choose a nation, if this isn't checked, other people won't be able to choose that nation. This kind of unchecked locks people out. That's the best I've been able to tell, because nobody's playing multiplayer yet. Anyway, pause on notifications, everybody cares about that. Um, yeah, lots, lots of decent stuff in here. You got good control over the audio, but this is where <laughs> I'm very upset. You got no rebindable keys, but not that I expected it. Paradox doesn't do that. So, okay, let's, let's jump into the game. Everybody, everybody wants to see what's going on. So, one of the interesting things I noticed in the new game screen, and of course we're going to go to the 36 start, which is the typical one. So, everybody always says, okay, Hitler has this special dictator trait, right? He gets the plus 50% power. A lot of questions about, do other nations leaders have this kind of thing and the answer is basically no although you do see this japan ai modifier call ally desire minus 40 i think that's specifically designed so that japan doesn't constantly call germany into its wars and you probably had some really weird stuff happening but that was one of them and then the other one i see here is ai modifier focus on defense france so that is interesting uh, I guess they had situations where a, where the France, French were being way too aggressive, and <laughs> they had to give them a modifier to focus on defense. Dislikes Germany. Yes, of course. Okay, so those are the only ones that we've ever that I've seen here. I haven't gone to any of the others yet. So we're gonna jump in. One more thing before we do, people have been wanting to know, what do the difficulty levels do? The difficulty levels, as far as I can tell, do exactly what's listed on the screen here. Production efficiency cap goes way up, research time goes down, and political power gain goes up by another 0.5, essentially. Uh, that is actually, you, it doesn't look like a lot, but that really does make a pretty significant difference. You get way more equipment, your stuff gets researched faster, and you can do way more with your political power earlier than everybody else. Um... And the opposite of true is, is, of course, true for veteran. You lose production efficiency, your research time goes up by 10%, and you lose political power gain by 0.5. So, yeah, that's a pretty significant thing. I'm going to leave AI historical focuses on uh, because I want to try to guarantee that the Germans and the Soviets go to war during this particular game uh, at, you know, semi-standard time screen. Um, so, everything looked good. Uh, this, the, there's no issues on the stream before I get started. I just want to make sure we're we're situated here. All right, so let's do it. Start now. The the very first thing to do. I kind of wanted to like have one of these loaded up where I went through all the logistical stuff, but you know what? It's not that big of a deal. I'll do the logistical stuff in the background. And I'm actually gonna turn on my little timer here if I can find it. There it is. Uh, and if I do that, then it's there. So I'm gonna try to save these in essentially 30 minute chunks. So, stand by... Oh, I can't do it. Okay. The bitrate is lower. Get out of here. All right, I'll have to go after this, over this after the fact and try to cut it up for people because I don't want it to be one big stream on YouTube. Okay, so here we go. Russian Far East is low supply. Oh, that's, that's no good. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I didn't see that the first time. Maybe it's only there temporarily. Okay, so we got a lot of options here at the very beginning, and, of course, we have a lot of 
things to look at. Now, some people probably want to see the resources map mode. That is one of the things I definitely really wanted to see. Uh, we can take a quick look around here. You can see tons of oil in the Caucasus. 126, another 26 here, another 18 here. Uh, and also chromium, decent amount of chromium in there. Now, one of the things I wanted to look at when I was playing the Soviet Union is how many resources are over here in range of Japan? How worried about Japan do I have to be? And the answer is that there's actually a significant, even though there's no, there's no oil over here, about a quarter, if I remember correctly, a quarter of my tungsten is produced in this area, like this one spot right here, and about, a, uh, or is it more like a third of my aluminum, uh, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, if you include this one right up here, this 34, that's about a third of my aluminum production is happening over here. So Japan is a bit of a threat. I can't just ignore them because tungsten is very valuable for building, I think it's heavy tanks and artillery. Uh, so that is something to be concerned about. And of course, you've got a lot of chromium over here, but you know what? Russia has a ridiculous surplus in chromium. I could ignore all the chromium over here and still be doing fine. So that's uh, that's that's the, the resources map mode that we're looking at here. What about over in the west? Uh, well, Iran, of course, has tons of oil. Iraq has a bunch of oil. And uh, Saudi Arabia, no oil yet. That's later. Um, Italy can actually get about... 12 or 20 oil built in Libya if they follow some national focuses that lets them actually compete. Um, so you got a lot of things to look at over here. Swedish iron and tungsten and chromium here. Very important for Germany in general uh, for them to trade with because they don't start with a huge amount of resources. Of course, that's what all these wars are about is wars of resources. Poland has four measly oil. Okay, so that's the resources map mode. That's looking pretty good. Um... Then we've got, uh, let's just start playing. Let's just start playing and see what's going on. One of the problems here, of course, the Soviet Union faces is that there's a Trotskyite plot. National unity minus 20%. And home of the revolution gives us, essentially people can't turn us away from communism very easily. But our construction speed is also reduced. And unfortunately, we only start with three research slots. By the way, every nation has the ability to get five research slots. However, the Soviet Union has one of them locked way down here, and this one you cannot choose unless you have had a war since completing the Great Purge, or it's after, 1940, or it's after January 1st, 1941. So, you wait until you do the Great Purge, then you fight a war with Finland, or Estonia, or whatever you want, then you do this so that you can get down this tree to the other research slot. That's the way I think that you're supposed to kind of look at it. The other research slot is here or over here. Because these two are mutually exclusive, you can only get to one of these. So, and progress cult is nice, minus 5%. So, the question is, what are we going to do this game? Well, I have an idea. And it just might be crazy enough to work, but I want to put a battalion of KV-1 heavy tanks in every single one of my infantry divisions. Do you think we can do it? I want to try to do that before war with Germany. And I know, I know, I sound crazy, but hear me out. I think I know what I'm talking about here. I think I can do it. But what it's going to require is a ridiculous amount of civilian factories... And then a ridiculous amount of military factories. But civilian factories is first on the list. We're just going to get a whole ton of them. A whole ton of them. And put them way over here where nobody can hurt them. Now, we're just going to let that run for many years. Meanwhile, we're going to want a lot of industrial research. And even more importantly, we want research research. So that's where we're starting here, here, and here. And then we'll move on to tanks and things and the fun stuff later. Now, free dockyards. What the hell are we doing with the Red Navy? The Red Navy? All right, somebody wants to see Brazil. What do you want to see about Brazil? They have stuff. What about their resources? Brazil has... Ooh, lots of, lots of rubber. That's it. Just rubber. <laughs> Export your rubber and buy everything else you need because you have no steel. Good luck producing infantry with Brazil. Holy crap. Venezuela almost has uh, as much oil as the Caucasus. Actually, they might have more. I haven't actually looked over here. Of course, the Americans with their ridiculous oil production in Texas at this point. One stat that I heard that might be a little bit apocryphal, but uh, was that the United States went from the largest exporter of oil in the world before World War I to the largest importer of oil in the world post-World War One, 
so that is crazy. So, okay, let's keep going. And... A block. Come on, guys. Don't make me go to the chat and block people. Come on. Okay. So, anyway, back to the dockyards thing. Like, what are we doing here? Uh, I don't care about this. I don't care about this. All I'm going to do is turn these back to one. Because I don't care about the Red Navy. And I never will. Uh, unless I maybe... No, I'm never going to care about the Red Navy. Uh, convoys at the bottom. And we'll just build convoys when we're done. That's all we're going to do. So... Free military factories. What do we want to build? Well, not strategic bombers. Why the hell? We can't reach Germany from here. Are you crazy? That's not how that works. We might be able to get to the Prussian areas. I don't know. They have eight unlocked slots there. They've probably got some factories there, but I don't know if it's worth it. Anyway, we start with a few strategic bombers. I don't want to build any. Uh, we got a lot of infantry equipment to make up here if we want to distribute anything. So I'm actually going to put one more into support. Three more into infantry, and I still have actually a lot here. So let's get a bunch of light tanks under construction, some motorized, and a ridiculous amount of fighters, because we are going to be at a disadvantage in the air, I am sure. That's our 36. I'm going to have it start cranking out infantry equipment as soon as it is ready. Uh, so my plan, again, 60 KV-1s in every infantry division before we fight Germany. I want them to show up and be like, well, I can't penetrate that. I don't, I got nothing. Uh, and we'll see what happens. So, insufficient resources. We can buy a little bit of rubber as needed, but right now I don't want to do that because I want to save all of my resources for civilian factories until we get there. Okay, I'm going to uncheck the pause button and just let it roll at speed four for a while. The good news is we're going to get the Spanish Civil War fairly quickly, and when that happens, we'll get to do some fighting. Now, what did I do in the previous game? I have to kind of... So I go to the Army Overview, and I'm going to take all... Oops. I'm going to take all of the Cavalry Divisions. Like, why do we have Cavalry Divisions? No, no thank you, Cavalry Divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and then we are going to turn them into Infantry Divisions. And then whatever I have left of the cavalry, I'm going to turn into motorized divisions. It's going to take a long time to actually build enough trucks for that, but I kind of want to do it anyway. Uh, there we go, motorized divisions. Uh, so now our need for motorized just skyrocketed. And our need for infantry equipment also just skyrocketed, and that's specifically because those cavalry divisions were super tiny. They basically have nothing in them, so they didn't need any infantry equipment. But if we look at the same thing of, like, so 480 versus 900. So all those basically just doubled the, re the, the infantry equipment requirement. Uh, I, I can't make motorize my main divisions, man. You see how little oil... Uh, I make zero rubber. Zero. I'd have to import all of it. And I could. It's not impossible. But, uh, yeah, rip Soviet cavalry. Don't worry. Um, we will allow them to do their job uh, once we turn them into military police for when we invade places. But right now, they have this, like, NKVD division, but it's made up of infantry. Infantry suppression is 1.2. Cavalry suppression is 2.0. So why wouldn't you make your NKVD suppression uh, battalion or division out of... Uh, out, out of here. I, I don't know. I don't know. So we are going to change all of our NKVD, which we actually can't see, so I have to go in here and change this to a skull, because that's what the NKVD mean to me. Uh, and we'll go back into this, change it by type again, and let's search for skulls. They're in here somewhere. See how many divisions they start with? I have to scroll for days. And I'm going to turn all these into standard infantry divisions as well. Which is going to, again, skyrocket our equipment requirements. Yeah, that's why I wanted all our equipment to be a thing here. Uh, and with the construction, let's just put one more military factory in there. Because, yeah, this is, this is going to take a long time. Let's see. Uh, how long before we catch up on infantry equipment? Uh, two years? 
hours-ish? Okay, that's not the worst thing in the world. We got time. We got time. We don't need to build synthetic refinery things because we can just import it from the UK. Uh, I mean, there's some rubber also on this border that we could get from somebody. No, all of the rubber is really down here. This is where pretty much all of the rubber in the world is. 260 here, 800 here, 138 here, 50 here, 242 over here, 72 over here. This is the rubber supply for the world. 94 over here, 70 over here, 10, 4, 2, and then... Nothing. The rest of the world has zero rubber for all intents and purposes. All right, we finished the five-year plan. That got us a bunch of civilian factories. We're going to go straight to getting these military factories, and I'll talk more about my overall strategy in a moment. Uh, now, there is a tiny bit of rubber over here. Historically, the British did get rubber from the uh, African area. Is that the Congo? Is that what this is? Uganda? Um, that brings up Book of Mormon. Okay, so... I'm not going to check the chat here. I haven't seen... I, I haven't been following. I've just been sitting here staring at it and talking. Sorry, guys. Uh, all right, so... Next up on the list, it says, Hey, you're not building any... Yeah, that's because I'm so far behind here. But let's just train up one unit uh, at some point in the future, and we'll see what happens with that. Now let's reorganize our actual military. I want to take all of my motorized... Oops, I need to unpause. I need to take all of my... One, two, three, four, five... Get all these guys. And let's take all the motorized as well, and we're going to put them all into their own army. And I... Did I miss... I think I missed some of them. Yes. There we go. We'll put them in this army as well. So 25 units in this army, which is just a little bit shy of being able to give this to one of our great... Where's Zukov? Zukov, my man. Panzer leader and winter specialist with a five skill. He is amazing. Let's give him the panzers and the motorized divisions. And we'll take one of these motorized divisions and we'll actually put it in a new division, which all the rest of our infantry is going to go to on this front here. So, bit by bit, we'll take all of the infantry and put it on the main front. There we go. So we've got a lot of infantry and one motorized in there. Uh, and let's quickly figure this out. We want to give them a border. So they'll all go there. Now I want to take all my mountain troops, and I want to separate them and make them sort of an elite company, because they are. They start as an elite company. All right, we finished our that. Now we're going to go to here, because we need research, research, research if we want to get that KV-1 early on. Right? That's what we need. And to give you the impression here, let's see what we got here. The armor tree. KV-1 is right now 1,300 days away. That's a long time. So the next research we do will be the T-35 and then the KV-1, I believe. But we're going to tie up one of our research slots for quite a long time doing that. So we need to get another one. We need to get another one. Now, Progress Cult is, I think, the way I want to go. I want to get to this research slot. So I want to take Positive Heroism, which gives me a guy that makes my armor divisions amazing. Armor Genius. Uh, and it also gives me Zukov if I really want to do the mass assault thing. So, yeah, we got a, a pre-release copy of the game to streamers. They gave a bunch. Uh, I believe uh, Quill18 is also doing something and Magnus is. Um, now, I could also go down the collectivist propaganda line, which actually gives me a ton of national unity, which allows me to survive more longer as they push into my territory. But I don't really want to be push that far back. So, now this is also good recruitable population. 0.5, but you know what's better? Social science. 3% recruitable population. You hit this. That's 4 million people. It's insane. I never have to change my recruitment, law recruitment laws ever. But we're missing out on all six of these. The transformation of nature gives us six rubber in Kaisel Orda. I actually don't even know where that was. Kaisel That's not Kaisel Orda. Maybe I missed it. Is there another Kaisel somewhere? I 
Yeah, so I'm not sure what that refers to, but apparently you get you get a bunch of them. So yeah, so we have to choose between getting a little bit of uh, better construction speed is good. New Soviet man allows you to do kamikaze strikes for some reason, but this gives you a little bit of rubber infrastructure, which is good, and an extra research slot, which comes fairly quickly. However, I think we want to go straight to the Stalin Constitution because the purges, we don't want the purges, not yet. Uh, basic machine tools is done. Excellent. Now, we have a decision to make here. Concentrated industry or dispersed industry? Dispersed industry is good for changing your production lines. But I think I just need more raw output. So I think I'm just going to get more raw output here. I'm also not terribly concerned with the strategic war against Germany. Uh, okay, speed going again. So back to this. We have to decide exactly how we're going to go. I think I'm going to go straight down here to the extra research slot. And then we can look at... Where's our Finland claim? Do we have to claim Finland separately? I mean, we've got improve the Stalin line. Claims in the Baltic. This gives us claims in Latvia. Baltic security gives us claims. Finland, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. Communist pressure. Karjala. I think that might be here. Yes. The... the um, this isn't the peninsula. The Damn, there's a name for that, and I can't remember right now. All right, the stream is lagging a bit on YouTube, just fine on Twitch. Is anybody else having a lag issue on YouTube? Please let me know. I will adjust it. YouTube itself is giving me the thumbs up. I'm looking at their situation. All right. Um... Yeah, no, the Finnish-specific focus is this Baltic security one. Tartu, Harju. I think those are the other... Oh, Tartu and Harju. So it's actually Finland and Estonia packed into one. Karelia. That's what this is. Karelia is the name I've heard used for it. Buffering every five minutes. All right. So it's pr if it's buffering, you can turn it down to 720p. It'll probably work better for you. Okay, so with the units up here... I think I want to build a new front with these guys, but I want a new theater. And in fact, let's do this. Alright, so I like how if you grab an army that's got infantry, you hear, like, foots, footsteps. But if you grab your tanks rumbling... It kind of helps you remember which army you're taking, you're, you're clicking on. That's kind of nice. All right, so let us see here. We need to build a front against Finland with these four divisions. And oh, we got a new research to pick. And construction two is only a small ahead of time penalty. And it's really useful. But I think we need to go start down the T-35 line. All right, we have enough political power to choose a new option. And you know, this is one thing I think it's bothering me. The first thing you do is switch to war economy. Because fascists and communists can just do it automatically. There's no reason to stop at early mobilization. There's no reason to stop at partial mobilization. War economy is strictly the best possible thing you can have in your economy law. So, yeah, I'm going to do it. I always thought you had to pay 150 for each jump up the tree so that this one would cost essentially 450 to get to it from civilian economy. But no, I'm just totally going to go there because now my military factories are constructed much faster. And uh, yeah, my consumer goods factories, more importantly, are at 15%. So now I just gained about 14 factories back because I was at 30% before. So I gained 14 new factories to build stuff with. There's... There's, there's nothing that you can say bad about that. All right. Um, let's get all these guys out of the way. I'm just going to build a little thing here temporarily to send them to so that they aren't in the way while I'm choosing these other guys. All right. We'll give these guys here. Um, 
the mountain guys. I have a hard time deciding where to send them because, you know, there are no mountains anywhere. This whole area is just giant steppe. There's the Caucasus Mountains and there's the Ural Mountains, but, um, there's, there's no, uh, there's no mountains anywhere I'm going to fight. So I've got all these mountain troops, so I think I'm just going to make them my sort of more elite troops as a strategic reserve for the most part. So let's find the rest of the mountain troops and put them all in a strategic reserve. That way, if one part of the line is faltering, I send them, and they will have all the best equipment. And by default, they have some slightly better stats. So let us take them. We'll put them in their own thing here. Stalin construction. Constitution, rather. All right, we're going to go straight to positive heroism so we can get to that uh, research bonus very quickly. Um, so we got the 13 mountain divisions here, and I'm going to put them on their own little line here just so they're out of the way of everybody else. Um, these two guys, let's put these guys in the finish border as well because uh, if you look here... You can see underneath the portrait of an army, you see a green and red bar. The green bar describes what it thinks the current strength difference is between your side and the other side on that specific front that they are on, which is interesting. You know... You ask that, too. I thought so. I'm on the division overview here, the army overview, and I thought for sure I'd be able to click this button and select all of that type, but no, I'm not. It's, it's a small oversight. It's a quality of life thing I fully expect to see changed in the future. All right, so we saw the games of the, what is that, 11th Olympiad, blah, blah, blah. This is just a flavor thing. It has no real effect. Um, okay, so yeah, I really would like to be able to select all of a particular type up here, but they kind of bunch them all together, right? There's, if I have two different light tank divisions, they bunch them all together, um, I believe, into whatever's up here. I've got the 13 mountains. Okay, so let's fix this. This is the finish. Oh, hang on. Finish frontier. Perfect. And, in fact, I am going to deprioritize that frontier. No, you know what? If we're going to fight a winter war there, we got to deal with that. Well, why would we fight it in winter? We would be stupid to fight it in winter, right? Now, because we are the Soviets, we are fighting on the West Front, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. Let's assign all of... Oh, they're already signed there. Okay. So I've got these guys who haven't been assigned to anything. Perhaps they could form some more f troops for the Finnish frontier. And we'll pick some leaders here in a second. Stormcrush is going to get no sleep tonight. That's too bad. All right, I'm sticking on four here because I want to try to get to some interesting things going on. Uh, even though I'm a little behind. Now, this is an interesting thing. Uh, you see this. I click on a state, and I can pin it. So that now, if I ever need to get back to it, I can just click on it. I think? No? What does that do? Why did I go into air mode? Did I have... Oh, interesting. Hang on. That's interesting. So it pins... I don't know what it's supposed to do here. Maybe it just shows you the status of that area. I'll have to play around with that some more. Alright. So, what troops have not been assigned? I'm sure my Far East troops need some assigning. Oops, let's do this. Uh, so, let's take all of these guys and form a new... Group on a new theater. The Far East Theater. I know, I've got a Finnish frontier, I have a West Front, and I have a Far East Theater. So sue me, I like that. I like the way it's set up. Now, I don't, I guess we do have to put the border all along Manchuko because, oh no, because Mongolia is technically in our 
faction, so I guess we do need to put it all the way along there. Well, that's going to be difficult. There's positive heroism, so we can go straight to our progress cult, which we desperately need. We need our as many things as possible. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hold alt here, and I'm going to edit this because I would prefer that we guard against them getting these resources. That is what I'm primarily concerned about Japan taking. If they take these resources, I'll have plenty of time to shift units over and defend these. But the primary concern is to have these guys all guard this frontier. And you'll notice as I was pulling this forward and back, it's green because it says with the number of people currently assigned to this line, we can guard this adequately. But now that it's yellow, it's like, well, we can't really guard this. There's going to be holes in the line if we drag it all the way down here. It comes red. There's some major holes in the line. We cannot guard it. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're doing this, when you're building these, these fronts as we go. All right, so I've got the Far East Theater. Now, I've got this thing, Sinkang. Why do we have guys here defending against Sinkang? Who cares? They are going to be coming over here, and they're going to be my Romanian front uh, over here in the vest. Uh, oh, I wanted to select these guys. And boom. Come over here to the Romanian front. That should be enough people to guard the Romanian front for now. Now, where's my mountain troops? My special mountain army up here. They don't need to be there. They can be on the west front. So, my special mountain army. What to do with them? I think they are going to be the strategic reserve. I like to make my strategic reserve orange. And I'll give it a special spade symbol. And the other orange ones we will change to... I don't know. They are far in the south. Let's make them yellow. And the other thing I love to do is name the armies because, oops, I still have that on. Yeah, I can't spell. Okay, so because that's very valuable because when you hover over this, you can quickly and easily see, oh, that's the Romanian border. Oh, this is the whatever that is going to be. That's the... the Panzer Army. Oh, hang on. Here we go. Very important. Spanish Civil War because we're going to break off five of our quote-unquote elite uh, mountaineers because Spain is actually quite mountainous and hilly, so it's going to be very valuable to send five Spanish, uh, five mountain divisions here. So let's form their own special group here, and I'm going to give them a general, a good general like Boris Shapinikov. He's a level three. He could get to be better. I don't want to give him the Panzer leader. Maybe I could. I mean, we've already got a good Panzer leader. So yeah, let's give him this guy. And now we should be able to go here. Now you can see the borders are somewhat tenuous, but we are going to send volunteers and we're going to send that division of five this guy. The pink. The pink army. It'll generate 2.7 threat by sending these guys. We could also send a little lend lease to help him out. I think we might do that. Let's go here. Even though I desperately need my infantry equipment, I'm going to send them 10%. They're going to need it. And I would like to win. So, let's do that. And we've got enough money to... Mo or, uh, not enough money. We've got enough political power to modify the government. And here, heavy tank designer. Armor research time is down. Heart attack and armor is up. So we could get armor and heart attack or we could gain speed and reliability. Or we could just get reliability and soft attack, but that's not... Eh. I mean, I like that, but heavy tank designer. Let's get some more armor on our heavy tank, right? Yeah. I think I like that. So that is important. Getting your tank designer chosen before you start actually researching the tank is what's important because the bonuses they provide will, will, will be available specifically for that tank. Now, I kind of like the captain of industry makes our civilian factories construct things much faster or we construct civilian factories much faster, I should say. So we're going to take that right now. Uh, and we sending over we're sending over expeditionary forces. Let's turn this down to speed three. 
They accepted our lend lease, and they'll allow the uh, volunteers to head over. How many mods will be out in the first two hours? Oh, gods, there are going to be a gajillion of them. Just for Hitler's face alone. No, listen. I am going to put some people on the Turkish border. But I don't want to start a fight there, man. That's that's pretty... That's asking for trouble. All right, these guys are on route... Uh, 26th of November is when they're going to get there. I'll speed it up until we get to 26th of November. Now, let's see what we can see about these sides. 35 to 49... Uh, Approximately equal. Looks like Republican Spain has a little bit more. Concentrated industry. Hold on one second. And mechanical computing is done. We could... Oh, God. That's really far ahead. We don't want to do that. Uh, what else do we have here for industry? We could go to 1937. That's very, very small. So, yes. Let's get that. Uh, and then... this Is this the time? Is this the time as soon as this is done to start researching the KV-1? I don't know. I don't know. Not yet, though. Not yet. We could go back to industry. Here we go. Improved machine tools, because we need more output. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed the other N. Is that what you're saying? There you go. See, I pay attention. I saw the chat begging, begging for them to fix the lowercase f in the, str in the, in the French stream. And, and they just ignored it. They just ignored it. But it was there. All right, five divisions have arrived. Where are they? They're in the Special Spanish Volunteers Theater. So here they are. Now, we have to figure out where we're going to be most effective with these five arguably superior, because if you look, all of the, uh, well, most of these Spanish uh, units are lacking in equipment. So we are going to be much more effective than pretty much all of our allies here. So what can we do that would be terribly valuable? I think if we build a front here and try to collapse behind these guys, that would be pretty awesome. So let's do that. We're going to put our guys there. And then we're going to build a plan to go all the way to here and cut these guys off so that they can lose their supply and get destroyed by even the meager Republican Spaniards. All right, I like this plan. I'm happy to be a part of it. Let's do it. The question is how long do we keep them waiting for a planning bonus? And I think the answer is not very long. Let's try and get like 10% and then start moving. These guys are already starting the fight. That's good. It's good for us. Oh, they're attacking us, and we're winning. So, unfortunately, we're not gaining a planning bonus if they're attacking us. But they do have... Oh, this is a division from Nationalist Spain that has full equipment. But they are losing pretty heavily. Let's take a look here. They have no commander, so of course they're taking a big beating. They have basically no power to hurt us. And we have all the power to destroy them. So they're just taking a bunch of losses for no particular reason. Maybe they know our plan. And let's see if we adjust this a little bit and try to swing in from this side. There we go. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to take those three in a row. And our planning bonus is growing. And it's actually at 16%. We are executing the plan. Execute, execute, execute. Go, go, go. All five divisions coordinating here. If we can cut off three or four of the Nationalist Spain divisions... Oh, they've got reinforcements. They knew. They know what we're trying to do. They're paying attention. The AI's got reinforcements to keep that supply flowing. Yes, the video link that you're watching right now can be used to access the video on demand afterwards. So let's see. I gotta keep an eye on Madrid too because I've seen it fall fairly quickly. Uh, now we go straight to social science. Watch my watch my manpower when this finishes. I don't know what this exact... The world, like the mind, is in constant motion. I'm sorry. Da, comrade. 
The world, like the mind, is in constant motion. Nature is in a state of constant progress. Revolution, even. The principles of dialectical materialism can be applied to the natural sciences as well as the social. What does that even mean, and how does it get us four million manpower? I don't know. I don't know. All right. It's true. Uh, we've got Italians. We're fighting Italians over here. What is this? Oh, and Germans. Wow. So they came here to completely stop our push. We've got more, more, uh, more, 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 more. But geez, look at that. 422 breakthrough, or defense there, rather. Now, this is something I haven't been able to figure out. How does 25 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20 equal 189%? Are they, are they, they must be multiplicative instead of additive. All right, so we've made it through. As long as we don't get cut off, right? That's important. All right, let's see if we can just take two of them. Pull them back. I can't take these two out in order to... There we go. I'm just trying to widen our hole here so that we do not get trapped ourselves. All right, those guys are holding that front. That's fine. I don't... Well, they're pinning them. That's fine. I don't want you to do that, though. I want you to go up here. No, I want them over there. Let's do this and then this. We'll give them the correct orders ahead of time. We can take their capital here if we push hard enough and cut off three divisions. Uh, they're attacking out of their capital, but they just retreated, so now they're attacking from this direction so that we can't make any progress. Okay, here's where we have to make the big, tough decision. Do we now start researching the KV-1? It'll be done in less than three years. I think this is the time to do it. I really do. We should start being able to produce it by 1940, early 1940, and then maybe have enough. Could have brought one motorized division, you're right. I didn't think of that. This is a learning game. Spanish playground. Yes. Not too soon. It's not too soon. It's never too soon. We're gonna get another research slot in a minute. Alright, we took the capital. And we almost cut them off. It looks like the uh, our Spanish allies have helped to hold this front for us. We really just want to limit it to this. There's still three divisions at least in there. We'll keep these guys pinned in place while the rest of our divisions force their way in. Yep, got it. There it is. Nope, stay here. Go after them. No, hold the capital, please. Hold the capital, please. I would like you to hold the capital. See, they they need to get a hold command. I can't get them to stick here unless I tell them to attack something. I know they said they're working on that. They're working on, like, some ability where you can use a, a hotkey to basically bind a unit to a spot for a more extended period of time. Now we're going to go around here. We're going to change... The way this is set up, we're going to extend it over here, we're going to retract it to there. So everybody, everybody come over, get on this line, because we don't want to try to cross that river. We've already got to cross the river. Oh, you're right, I should check the rest of Spain. Madrid is okay, they're holding. I'm just going to start pushing our way back here for the new capital. So let's get a planning bonus going... I'm going to try to take to this. And then... I will try to take... to this. So that we can cut that guy off. And destroy him. Alright, so let's get the planning bonus happening. This guy's got plenty of planning bonus. He's actually a regular, too. They've been fighting so long here. Alright. 
All right, let's just get to 15, 20, 16% planning bonus seems to be a good time. We got to keep an eye on Madrid. Thanks, chat. Goal! Yes, yes indeed. Alright, a lot, a lot of standing around over here, but I don't see any Germans to stop us, so we are just about ready. We're at 18, 20%, and then we're gonna, we're gonna launch the invasion at dawn. Boom! Here we go. We have a breach. We have a breach. We're gonna keep going. I'm going to do this to pin these guys to prevent them from getting uh, into our breach here. And actually, we're doing well against them, too. No, 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 you, you go over here. Yeah, cut them off from supply first, please. Please do that. So now we're coming at these guys from two directions. Which means that they are essentially encircled. Although there's actually a really bad encirclement penalty if you are completely encircled. So when we finish this battle, these guys get a huge modifier. Right now, they just have a low supply modifier, which is about 30%. If they get the encircled modifier, that brings them to about 60%. Yep, let's check it now. There's the encircled. So 30 plus 30, they're minus 60% to their attack and defense. That's a pretty significant number. All right, let's finish them off there. The rest of our divisions are pushing up. We just eliminated tons of divisions there. Now, uh, okay, while we were doing fine over there, and I'm glad you guys really like what you're doing, but we got to go back and help. We got to help over here. Uh, let's take and hold these three provinces, shall we? Go! I don't want to strategically redeploy them, but the computer's doing it for me anyway. All right. All right, they're getting their organization back. When you strategically redeploy, you move much faster, but you have much less organization when you get there. No problem, Commander. Can you give them priority for reinforcement, or is that up to Spanish? You know, I don't even know how that works. Let's take a quick look. Here it is. Uh, no, that's Lend-Lease for the, the Spanish. I don't know. I can definitely do that by doing this. Priority reinforcement. I don't know if... You know, they, they don't, ha they're not really missing any equipment, I don't think. They're missing a little bit of equipment. Waiting for equipment to be produced and delivered. Yeah, so I could, I'm going to give them priority in their, this theater, so that'll do it. Alright, we did plenty over here. We encircled quite a few Spanish divisions. I don't think we got any Germans, though. The Germans... We pushed out and they redeployed somewhere else on the line. I don't know. I don't see them over here. They might be... Ah! The Italians and the Germans are fighting down near Cordoba. All right, Bra John. You know, everybody's got their own thing. I'm not judging. There we go. Socialist science. Fantastic. Okay, extra research slot. Go. We absolutely need that ASAP. We'll let things go here. One thing it took me a while to figure out. Okay, we need a planning bonus, don't we? We need something started. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's try and just get to these three provinces. Once we get to the river, we need to stop again. I'm okay just helping to hold Madrid for a while. Let's build up a big planning bonus so that we can push quickly to the river and then maybe get over it before they can put up a decent defense. The Germans and Italians are here in the south, though. We gotta be careful of that. They are gonna have a lot of pushing power, too, because they are gonna be well-equipped. You can see the nationalist Spanish pretty low on equipment everywhere around the board. Yeah, I mean, the way to breach that river is really to come over here and do it. There's no river here, so you can get around it. But that's why I want to build up a big bonus. We can hit them hard, hit them fast, and go through there before their reinforcements can arrive. Uh, so I want to get to the maximum planning bonus here before I make a move. Right now, I'm playing defense. Sometimes you got to play defense. In fact, this is a problem. I might not be able to execute this solution if, uh, 
if they get too close to Madrid over there. But if I put enough pressure... Oh, here come the Italians and the Germans. All right, I'm going to execute this plan now and see how far I can get before I have to turn back around. We got a lot of planning done. And we got a lot of our equipment reinforced here. So, go! How much can we win? This guy's just holding, because if he attacks somewhere, they can attack from multiple directions, and that's why he's not attacking. That makes sense. If you start an attack, and then someone attacks you, you get a pretty massive penalty for fighting in two battles at once. Oh yeah, by the way, did you see that? Five million manpower from the social sciences thing? I don't know how it works. I'm just gonna assume it's Soviet magic. Marxist magic. As long as these two provinces don't fall, I'm not turning around. That's that's my that's the line I'm drawing in the sand right now. This really is like a mini tutorial here. I cannot send more troops. It is unfortunately limited how many troops you can send based on your ideology and something else. It said based on the number of provinces involved in the civil war is how communism is determined. All right. Hey, there's a Germans were fighting here. They must have been exhausted when they got to the fight. Their organization is dropping rapidly right now. Even though they have really high defense, they're still getting hit by some of those. And they are not going to be able to put a bunch of a fight. Maybe we can get an exploitation over the river here and get to this other capital area. It's only worth three points. All of these things are worth three because we took the important one. No, Zargoza was actually worth one. But Madrid is worth a ton. So if the, Republi the Republican Spanish lose Madrid, they basically lose the war. Because they only have, what, Madrid, Granada, and Valencia, and I think Barcelona at the start? Maybe they don't even have Barcelona. So yeah, the Republican Spanish, they, they have basically two cities that if they lose then they are going to lose the war. I wish I could see the current state. All right, we're winning these. These guys are having a fight there. Where's my third guy? Oh, he's in here. Okay, so we're attacking from two directions right now. I'm going to try to sneak over the river. Oh, no, don't. Don't go there. I didn't mean to retreat there. No, retreat here, you jerk. Improve machine tools. Get over the river. Get over the river. There we go. We made it over the river. All right, now we have to reduce our line to just the river and hope that the Spanish can hold the rest of this open. Keep them from doing anything funny. Widen this gyre a little bit. Where are all of my troops here? I got one, two, three... Oh, where's this guy doing? The two guys down here. Pushing in for that spot. So where's their big points then? Three there. One there. One there. Three there. We took that. Sevilla actually worth five. But yeah, they don't have any big things that they could... They have a lot of little ones is how the nationalists... Or the, uh, yeah, the nationalists... Nationalist Spanish are. Germans going for Madrid. Oh, you're right, they are. They're pushing in. Uh, what can we do? I don't know, I really don't want to... I want to get over this. Now, their capital is, I believe, where all their supply is coming from. So we have to care, care about that, potentially. So we successfully, I believe, cut off this northern area from supply. Our supply is apparently coming from here. Alright, so we gotta kinda go around. I think we're gonna delete... I'm just gonna pause it for a second while we delete this front and we build a new front. And we're going to have everybody assigned to that front. And they're going to start moving. And we'll build a plan to get over this river and then come in behind the Germans. 
Oh, no, 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 no. I meant to tell you that. Uh, okay, and then we'll come in behind the Germans. There we go. We don't have tanks, but we can try to still do a, uh, a, a, an encirclement here. So let's see. They'll do this. You know, I think we really can just, like, can we shorten this to here? And then maybe the, we'll take a more narrow approach. Because I don't really want them to take all of these things. I just want them to take that one spot. Extra research slot. Excellente. Okay, so we've got another couple of things. Improve the railway network gets us... Stalino. Um, a lot of good stuff. Madrid is going to be lost. You're right. I've got to execute the plan right now, then. We have to start cutting them off and get to Madrid. Go, go, go. Oh, the Hindenburg. The humanity. All right, we're hitting the Germans hard there. They are in big trouble. The Italians are actually okay. The Germans are out of organization. They need time to rest and recover. And now we're hitting these guys from multiple directions. In multiple combats. That's the one I was telling you is really bad. Alright, so our guy here helping out in this fight is going to save Madrid. Madrid's not going to fall. Oh, there's a German division that's already... That German division's already back. Let's see. Can we get this bit of encirclement here? We have to get over the river. Oh, nope, they're attacking us instead. Oh, now we can get over the river. Holding these guys in place as we kind of get in behind them. Oh, these guys need to hang out. Alright, I gotta pause it and then tell them to go there. That's the only way they listen to orders. Let somebody else deal with that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't want to go across the river. It's bad news. Portugal's scared. Yeah, they got all their guys on the border. This guy's doing push-ups. All right. So. We hit the weak guys and we try to drive right to here. Oh, the Germans and Italians are trying to get out of the pocket. I think they're going to make it. There's too many nationalists Spain there, Spanish there to help. Keeping an eye on the northern front as well here. Oh, we're winning here. This next river is going to be a bitch, though. Yeah, they don't have any weak armies for me to attack. We can attack these guys and maybe catch these two. Oh, I've got it paused here. I'm like, why isn't anybody moving? What's the status? Yep, we hit the weak pocket. And... Now we gotta cross the river. If we want to stop the rest of this. But... Oh, we really need some of the Spanish to help us out from that side of the river, right? Okay, maybe we can do that ourselves. No. You're going to go here, 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 and then you're going to go there, and I give you permission to strategic re strategically redeploy. 
just need one person attacking from the correct side. Now, where's the rest of my troops here? Ah, there they are. Okay, they are also going to strategically redeploy to the other side of the river. And I'm going to close the battle plan for now. Alright, so we just need to give these guys a little bit of time to build up their organization, then they're going to attack from this direction and completely turn this battle around. These poor guys have been attacking across a river for far too long. Yeah, we're going to encircle those six. I think it's going to happen. These reserves need to get into the fight. There it is. The fight's turning in our favor. It's green. For those of you that are wondering, the green means that the progress is heading in our favor. The number represents the current progress. 100% means you win the battle. 0% means you lose. And that is going up very quickly. There are Germans in that fight too, but they're going to be able to retreat. Oh, jeez. These guys are winning because... Oh, there we go. We closed it. But we're getting attacked here, and we're definitely holding them off. These guys are in big trouble now. We got se seven divisions, people. Oh, research. Thank you. This is kind of... Oh, God. Look, it's been awful. Uh, so it does save 30 days worth of research, but we clearly went over that a little bit. Oh, boy. That's not good. Okay, let's get that there. It didn't pop up, did it? I thought maybe I missed it. Uh, okay, we do... Getting some better research time. Yeah, yeah, I want a computing machine. I want it. And then, um... Where do we go from here? We can do land doctrines. Now, I, as the Soviet shock player... I mean, look, the mass assault doctrine, most of the good things it gives you are... Uh, bonuses to your recruitment? Well, on this side, it gives you bonuses to recruitment. This side, it gives you relentless assault. It gives you supply consumption. Actually, that's kind of useful. Um, because I found out that I was actually running out of supply on my fronts. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this for the Soviets. They don't need more men. I want superior firepower. I want shock armies. I want armies that move very slowly and carry a big gun, if you know what I'm saying. Soft attack plus 20%. That is not a joke. We also have a military government that we can put up here. So what is the best next best thing we could put in? Ideological Crusader? Eh, no, 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 no. I don't like it. What do we do? Material designer for infantry equipment or for industrial concern? Industrial research time or electronics research time would be very good. Because uh, we want to get those research bonuses very quickly. Alright. Alright, so we've got all five in here pushing this way. This guy is retreating into an enemy zone, so they are going to die. No, they're not retreating. They're trying to break out. That can't be allowed. But they're weak. They are weak! And there's two zones between them and supplies. So, yeah, about that. There it is. Low supply. Taken. They're taking attrition, by the way, by being out of supply. So they're losing men and material just by being there. We don't even have to attack them. But... Alright, so where to go next? I don't want all four of these. Let's split that twice and keep one there and the other three here. And then we will go in for the attack. Planning schmanning. We'll attack across the river just to get the flanking bonus. Attacking from multiple directions increases the combat width. <gasps> oh no! Amelia Earhart has disappeared! Why isn't the war won already? Because... They still have... Actually, let's look. They have 90% national unity. We have to take 90% of their victory points. Um, and the Republic in Spain have 80% national unity. 
giving the nationalists a slight advantage. Yeah, we're using the volunteer system, so we're fighting in the Spanish Civil War. We got our mountain troops here in mountain terrain, which is hilly terrain, actually, which is good. And we've been trying to do some nice surrounds. We had seven divisions surrounded in this pocket. It's just a matter of time now before they're defeated. Meanwhile, we're pushing forward to go for Cordoba and Sevilla and whatever this one is. Maybe by the time we get all of those, how many is that? That is one, six, seven victory points down here. And that will leave them with three, four, seven. Oh, they're having a breakout over here. Well, they're, they're getting most of those too. This is going to be over pretty soon. If we can get to Sevilla and Cadiz, I think it's over. Okay, hang on. Here we go. This one's interesting. So this is a very difficult decision here, right? The Germans have proposed their treaty, uh, and let's take a look at what that is from their side. That is the treaty with the USSR. This was historically the treaty where they worked together on tank designs. They shared designs of tanks and knowledge, and both sides benefited from this. Uh, but I can't show the losses in a civil war that I can't that I'm not a part of, which is unusual. Uh, I was trying to find a way to do that. I'll show you in a second. So this gives the Germans a significant penalty for researching armor, right? Specifically for the Panzer III, they get a, ben a benefit and then two more bonuses for armor research. So if I say the capitalists are a worse threat to us both, the Germans get these great armor benefits that they're going to use against us. But, but, if I choose to say screw you and give the finger to the Germans, we get an armor research penalty of plus 75% for 365 days. For an entire year, we get a massive penalty to our armor research. I don't think we can afford it. Basically, if we collaborate with the Germans, our armor research continues. If we don't, we hit some stumbling blocks. So I think we have to collaborate with the Germans. They're going to get Panzer III's. And they're probably going to get Panzer IVs faster. And I can't stop them. But I really want that KV-1 as soon as possible so I can start it on the production lines. It is possible to invade Poland before Germany, I think. Uh, we, do you think we could take it all? I don't know. Now we need a national focus. Uh, we improve the railway network. We This here, all of this is locked. Can't do any of this because we chose positive heroism over collective propaganda. Moving industry to the Urals can't happen until we're at war. We could try to get down to anti-fascist diplomacy and get claims on the Baltic and claims on Poland and then demand Eastern Poland. If we can do all of that before the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact is set up, then that's good. Uh, but we could also do transpolar flights and ocean-going navy to found this thing here. So let's try and do that so we can get down to the anti-fascist diplomacy. I haven't purged yet. Um, and that's going to be an interesting experience. I don't know if they showed that on the stream today. Did they show the purges? Sevilla. Yeah, okay, Sevilla. You're right, it's not Sevilla. I'm just Americanizing it or Anglicizing it. Is that the correct term? Uh, so, yeah. Oh, no! Oh, no! Hang on, people! We can't let them get this pocket fixed. Oh, but we're under attack! They've pinned us! We can't stop them! I mean, we're going to win the defense of this attack, but... Marco Polo Bridge Incident. Japan is ratcheting up the tension over there, but they got supplies back to the pocket. I wasn't paying attention. R apparently not purging does give you a risk of the Trotskyite coup, which starts a civil war, essentially. But maybe we've got more of these guys trapped on the other side of the river. Do you think we can cap all of these guys over, including the Germans, cut them off from supply? It looks like we can. If we can get into there before reinforcements do. Oh no, we're getting it. Ah, oh, we got attacked over here, so it stopped us. I'm just trying to widen this thing here. The pocket is more important than holding the line. That's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to cut over to here to get the pocket back under control. I've got four divisions working on getting through this 
stiff resistance. This this division over here is gonna help hold the pocket open. The the that we have here. Hit the Italians. While they're they don't let them get any re uh, uh, recovery here. We're winning, actually, it looks like. That's good. Oh, but we're losing this one. We're not making any progress anymore. Survey, yeah, that's what we need to get. What do we want to coup? The chat says we should coup something. I always wind up with way too much political power as the Soviet Union. Do we want to coup Turkey? I think it would be nice to have Turkey as an ally. What do you think? It would certainly make Italy's plans a lot harder over here. Um, or we could coup Finland instead of having a war with them. But I kind of want to have a war with them. I don't want to win the winter war. Um, coup Iran? Eh. The Turks. Everybody says the Turks. All right. So first, we're going to boost party popularity for quite a long time. A few years is necessary. As far as I can tell. Um, and what do we have as far as leaders that can help us? These things only increase our communist support, but I thought there was somebody... Same ideology, opinion... No. I thought there was somebody in here that helped me do coups or something, but okay, we'll go back to that later. Now that we started the task on Turkey, we'll have to come back to it once it's finished. Oh, I need that to finish. I need that to get... All right, we're going to bring this guy in. Leave that spot undefended. Oh, you know what? You're right. Cooing Romania would be way better. I, I I, agree. That is more valuable to us. We're probably only going to have enough political power to coup one country. All right, we're going to win this this particular... Man, that battle's really hard for some reason. What is going on over here? Our other reserves can't get to the front. Look, there's three of them. Go in! It's right there! You guys suck. Are we just having really bad die rolls with getting the reserves in? I mean, I'm trying to get Spain... As, uh, we could get Spain into the common turn if we can get this war won. Oh, look at that! The guys cleaned up the entire north. Good job, Republicans. We're still, like, making progress, I guess? But it's like it's another 50 days before we win, because these guys won't leave the reserves. What is the deal? with reserves. Alright, and I can't get this guy... Alright, see, they had to retreat, because... what the hell? How about this? There we go, we got three people on the front lines now. Now we can do something. This guy's just gonna stay here to hold that. No, you should be able to fit a lot. Maybe that was... Was that a mountain territory? No, it was a freaking... Oh, it was a plains. Anyway, we're attacking here. And we're having much more luck. Although some of the... We had three divisions in it, and then it got reduced to two. That's interesting. Oh, so we finished. But then we got under attack, so we can't move in there. And they got to reinforce it. That sucks. Hit these guys. Screw them over. Alright, they put in a weak unit to defend it. We've almost got it. If we can do this, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. We've got a bigger pocket this time. And we'll just guard this river. There's no way they can get back now. And then maybe I can sneak around to survey, yeah. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be dreams! Yeah, pocket achieved, right? Where's the uh, achievement unlocked? 
pocketed like 30 divisions or whatever is over there. I don't think it's 30. It's probably like maybe 10. We know we had seven in the pocket before and a bunch more came in to save it. But yeah, somebody was asking like, where are the stats? Normally there's a thing up here that says you're at war and you can see how many casualties for both sides. I can't see it. Like it shows that they're at war, but any clicking over here doesn't show me any details other than who the attackers and defenders are, unfortunately. So that's a little bit of oversight. I would like to see more about the war that we're in. Maybe you're not supposed to. All right, modify the government. What else do we want to add? We could add a theorist. Theorist, very important to get early because army experience. Um, but what kind of theorist? A military theorist. It's just a general land doctrine. I don't want mass assault expert. We get two of them. Uh, so I guess it's this one, right? Yeah, air warfare theorist. No, I want ground XP. I'm getting a lot of ground experience, by the way, for this, which is very, very, very valuable. I, in the plays that I have made so far, ground experience is like gold. Army experience, I should say. It's incredibly valuable. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to Savaya. These guys are in the way. I want to keep these guys back on the border so that this pocket doesn't close. But those guys that are in the pocket, they're in between two rivers, so that sucks. But there's a Japanese guys in there. Look at that. We got the Japanese and the Germans trapped in that pocket. And they can't attack out, and so this, the National Spanish have just ringed them with people. Let's see if we can hit this guy from two directions. That's kind of what I'm trying to do over here as well. It's tying up some of their guys. What? What is this? How did this one Republican guy get over here? Did they go along the, the border there? Or the, 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 the ocean, maybe? Hey, transporter flights is done. So now we go to an ocean-going navy. I will never use those research bonuses. I can tell you right now. The only reason I'm getting it is so we can go further down the tree. Oh, hang on. The Japanese just declared war. Let's see what's going on over there. On Shanzi. So that's interesting. Let's see the... What is it? Diplomatic map mode. Not one that I have programmed. There we go. So they're at war with China and Shenzi, and that just very soon becomes all of the Chinas go into one faction to fight Japan. That is how that typically forms. Um, and of course, we haven't seen the Anschluss yet. We can't see what Germany has researched, but we can see what they are researching. Tactical air effort. I'm sorry, Jacob. I can't see the casualties. I'm not part of the war. So it doesn't show me the casualties up here. There might be a way somewhere in the world. If you click the glove. Diplomacy? No, yeah. I've, I've looked in the diplomacy tab for both of them. It's not listed. Here's the war. And that's it. Maybe it's on our thing. Do we should, anything in here? We're sending volunteers, but it doesn't say how many casualties we've made. There's nothing. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I wish I could. I just, I can't find it anywhere. That's probably a quality of life thing we'll see in a patch. You think the, oh, the globe. I thought you said glove. Current wars. <gasps> Ooh. Uh. Nope. No casualty list. It was a good thought. All right, so where are we? We got two. Oh, they're trying to cut us off. There's Japan declaring war on China now. So I'm like completely micromanaging my troops here. I've got this guy I can actually bring in as well.
The Nationalist Spanish are just, like, completely happy to just let this... How did this guy get in there? They got a pocket within a pocket. Look at that. That's interesting. Attacking across a river and through the woods to Grandmother's house we go. So this one... Apparently we have the edge, but it's not a good one, because we're attacking across a river for the 30% penalty, but they are very weak on strength and on strength and on organization. We got across the river, we can hit Sevilla! Sevilla! Ghost soldiers! This, here we go. Just a few more days, eight more days. We've got reinforcements coming in from this direction. Get the reserves in there. Shouldn't the combat width be increased because we're coming from multiple directions? Come on. Oh, but it's decreased because it's urban. I would imagine. No? There we go. Three divisions. Now they're all popping in there. Took Sevilla. Got another pocket going. Now let's jump down to Cadiz. So how many do they have left? They have the one here. And they have the one here. We still haven't taken... Oh, they also have Bilbao up here. That's worth three. Do we really have to go and take Bilbao because the National Spanish just gave up on it? Oh, there's also Cordoba. Tag switch, then you can check. I don't know how to tag switch, actually. We've got the eliting f elite fighting forces here. Alright, well we took that. So, now what? I guess we keep going. You know, I don't know how to rename... Oh, there we go. This is where we can rename a division. The Storm Crushers. I'm sure it's a console command, but I don't know how... I don't know what the console command is. Do you think it's the same as all the other Hearts of Iron games? I don't even know what Republican Spain would be. RSP? Unknown command. The Release Countries tab. The Soviet Union's Release Countries tab? Uh, I don't think they have a Release Countries option. They don't have any countries that they've taken over. Uh, ask for military access from Republic in Spain. What would you need military? I don't have any of your territory. Yeah, the People's Republic can have some help there. So one of their last cities has to fall. We took uh, Malaga. I guess, I mean, we really should just go over here and try to take out the Germans, because Bilbao's worth three, but it'll take forever to get up there. Just type tag SPR. Oh, okay, look at that. You guys are smart. I hope you didn't screw everything up, though. <laughs> I should be able to get back, right? I didn't save it. <laughs> All right. So, you can see Nationalist Spain is 98% towards capitulation. Boom. So tag Sov. I know the Soviets are SOV, so that's easy enough to get back to. So 128,000 casualties versus 83 casualties for Republican Spain, because we got a lot of those divisions uh, caught in the pocket, and they're just taking attrition over time. Tags are what the... Tags are three-letter, like, names for the factions... So hopefully I didn't completely screw up Republican Spain if I switch back over. Ah, that works. Look at that. And you got Error... Is that Error Dog up in the corner there? Or is that a different dog? Is that Console Dog? It doesn't look like Error Dog. Don't unpause. Ah, yes. 
And then it redoes all the stuff. You know, they put in Stellaris the ability for it to... Uh, basically, an AI takes over for somebody that leaves in multiplayer. The AI will not... Um, will not do anything aggressively changing stuff for a while. All right, so is there is there capital now, Bilbao? Where's their capital? They don't have a capital anymore? I thought it moved every time. Huh. A concentrated industry. What do we do next? All right, we got a couple of options. I think artillery needs to start being researched. Cordoba's across a river, man. I can't just do things. Um, we get a maintenance company. Uh, but I think I want to get a BT-17. I think this research thing might have actually come from our armor agreement with the Soviets? Or with the Germans, rather? I must have. Siutia. Where's Siutia? Oh, it moved to the other side of the freaking ocean. How are we going to get that? That's where they have five victory points. That's why they haven't capitulated yet. All right, let's hit Cordoba and hopefully finish this. It's only worth one point, but they were 1% away. I'm gonna get artillery, calm down. I just got a bunch of army experience. I'm gonna be able to change my division soon. TM. All right, we just pop that. There it is, it's over, okay. So we have our good friends coming to Spain. Why would they wanna join our faction? So world tension goes up, they wanna join a faction and Spanish opinion of Soviet Union also uh, gets them more likely to join our faction. So, once we start getting close to going to war with Germany, I want to get Spain in our faction. But for now, let's get back to what we were doing before, which is reorganizing the entire Soviet military. Uh, okay, so we had our border here with... This is Army 2 that we need to give... A Polish Army... Our 27, these are our sort of strategic, uh, our, our panzer army here, right? We've got 24 uh, motorized and mechanized troops. They're our exploitative division or army. I'm just going to call it mechanized army for for easy of re ease of remembrance. Uh, and then we got our Romanian border down there. And then we've got our aces in the hole, our mountain divisions, which are also just going to kind of be our strategic reserve that will put them in holes that appear. What's this guy? This guy is going to go into the Finnish front. And we've got the Far East Theater. Now, who is not assigned? The guys down in the Crimea have not been assigned. And now there is this guy. And I'm not terribly worried about naval invasions, but just in case, I'm going to save four divisions over here. And we'll put them in a new theater. And we're going to call this the Turkish Theater, the Southern Theater. All right. Change the symbol of the mech army. You're right. Where is that? Here's my 24. We'll give it this big... I, you know, that always looks like a locomotive to me. Like, coming end-on towards you, but I don't know. I wish I had more symbols. It only gives you the three. You get, like, a shield, a spade, and that. Like, why couldn't you have, like, a sword symbol or something? Um, all right, so the Southern Theater uh, is going to get a little garrison area. We're going to garrison these two areas. Both areas have ports. They're the only two ports in the Black Sea except for that one. Uh, and that's along the border with Turkey, so that's going to be garrisoned by them anyway. So let's let that happen. And then we get... Nope, we don't want that. And then we get our... Okay, the end of the Spanish Civil War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get these guys who are going to be our... Our border guards for Turkey. Like, so good luck defending this border with these two divisions. But I, I'm not sending any more unless the Turkish join the Axis. The Turkish? The Turks. 
All right, let's see if all of them have armies. Or if I missed anybody. Oh, we got a bunch. Where are these guys? Oh, are these the guys along... Oh, they're in the middle. They're in the middle. So who needs more men is the question. What do you think? Who needs more men? I'm going to put them in Finland for now, assuming that we're going to go to war with Finland soon. And then we'll keep the ones that are on the Polish frontier there just in case. All right, so we're going to go back up to speed four. And then we'll take a look at our air force. Because right now it's pretty awful. You've got naval bombers here. But if I tell them to deploy to the Black Sea and be ready to fight, they have a pretty poor mission efficiency. Like they can't they can't fly out and do much. But okay, we've got fighters deployed here in the Ukraine. And the Ukraine, I can put 300 fighters in Ukraine. And I tell them, you guys are assigned to the Ukraine. And your tactical bombers are also assigned to the Ukraine. But the fighters only have a 70% efficiency because Ukraine, because they're just fighter ones. Fighter ones don't have a long range. So they don't, they can't do the whole zone. Use your army experience. Yes, that is definitely going to be something that happens. We got another focus we can set. We're getting close to our anti-fascist diplomacy here, but the question is, how long do we wait until we do the purges? We got to do the purges sometime. All right, and then we've got more air units here. Um, these are two different fighters. Is that what we got? Why are they... No, they're the same. So why do we need two different groups? Let's just make this 300-ish. Close enough. Uh, and we'll hit them there, and they will be air superiority. And we got tactical bombers here, too. I mean, here's the thing. Tactical bombers... are... Their air superiority mission is shit. Their strategic bombing... Oh, there we go. We got our mini tanks done. Now, those have a production cost of 9 versus 12 for the medium tanks. But, hey, look at this! Because of that treaty with Germany, we actually did get the same advantages as they did. So not only did we get the 50% bonus on the light tanks, we got a 100% reduction in ahead-of-time penalty for researching medium tanks. We're just going to be tank heavy. 150. Yeah, I'll take it. How's our situation with our civilian factories? We have a sh uh, ridiculous amount of them right now. So as soon as these are all done, we are going to say, build, 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 build all of the military factories that you can. All back here. All of them. All of them. Holding shift so that it builds all in each territory. Not just one or two. This is what is going to be necessary to build our massive tank armies. Right here. Alright. So we got enough military factories for a very long time now. Purge is happening soon. TM. I would like to get some claims on somebody. Uh, let's see. Anti-fascist diplomacy... Doesn't do much for us by itself. The Stalin line doesn't. So yeah, we'll, after we found this, then we'll go to the Great Purge. Alright, we'll make you guys happy. Alright, so we have our two things here. Now that's what I was looking up, right? I was looking up the tactical bombers versus close air support. So, what's the main difference here? Tactical bombers have better air defense, lower agility, better strategic bombing, because the other one doesn't have anything. What's their ground attack? It's only six, whereas these guys have a ten ground attack. I mean, it just seems to me... 
The range is a big thing, though. The operational range on the tactical, on, on the the close air support in 36 is pretty weak. I need to get to 1940 close air support to have anything approaching value. So we'll get to there. Reload your stream. Twitch is saying the sound is cutting out. Is anybody else having an issue with that? Ocean going focus. You mean the ocean going navy? Yeah, it gives you research bonuses for two naval vessels. Let's see. Project 21 and Soviet Sky Suez class. I haven't actually even looked at the naval tree. Project 21 is a battleship. And what's the other one? Suez class? Oh, it's another battleship. It's a super heavy battleship. They give you bonuses for battleships. I don't know. I don't know, man. Why? But you have to take it in order to take this and the rest of all the things in this tree. You have to. You have to take the ocean going navy. Go figure. So the Great Purge gives us a big question. NKVD Primacy, which gives us oh, uh, superior firepower doctrine has finished key. Let's see. Um, we do want to go down this. I don't know if we want to go down it again right now or if we want to look at something else. For the war with Finland, we're going to want both this and this, I think, researched. So let's start with this. We'll come back to the land doctrine soon. All right, so now I did not finish. Oh, I have one guy that's unassigned. Let's put him on the Polish border because I don't think we have a lot there. Uh, we don't even have a commander assigned over there. We don't want the old guard. I wish I could get rid of them. Like, they're completely useless. They're level ones. I could get a new level. Oh my god! 170 political power to get a commander? Oh, the more you have, the more expensive it gets. That's why. Okay, it's a little bit less. Okay. Offensive doctrine. I think that is the field marshal I want on my Polish frontier. Right? Yeah, I think that's it. I might have him in the Finnish frontier, actually. Uh, <laughs> but Finnish frontier actually has 24 units. That's exactly the right size. And it's probably big enough. We could try to get a high skill... General. I mean, this guy's a panzer leader, but I've, I've got tons of panzer leaders, actually. But he's skill 5. I like that. But, uh, you know what? Let's promote him. He'll be a skill 4 field uh, uh, field marshal without the nonsense. There's the Anschluss. Right? We only have the two field marshals here. Actually, no. All of our field marshals that we aren't currently using are old guard, which is awful. So we do... I want to promote this five guy to become a level four field marshal. He'll lose the panzer leader trait, but we already have Zukov, who's a great panzer leader. Uh, so I am okay with this. He'll lose that. Uh, and he is now our skill four field marshal. Now, what do we have for another option? This guy's already leading somebody. Who's this guy leading? Oops. I took him. Oh. He is leading this group. Um, hmm. What did I just do? Zukov is definitely leading our... What do we got? Our 24 elite mechanized army here. And... The Tukachevsky is leading our Polish front. And this guy is going to be leading our Finnish front. But I thought he's the guy I just tried to promote to Field Marshal. Did I promote somebody else? We have two Field Marshals, but who are using them? Hang on. Hang on. Ah! There's our other field marshal. We sent him with the Spanish guys. All right. Now I'm happy. Um, 
so let's unassign him from that so that we can assign him to the Finnish frontier. Because I do like having this general, but we're going to need more than 24 guys is what it comes down to. So we'll assign this skill 4 field marshal to the Finnish frontier. And we need a new purges. Yeah, we need purges. And let's see the status. Ooh, hang on. The fifth column. There it is. The persecution of enemies of the people. Those who reverse or subvert the revolution. So, Trotsky is exiled, but we need to make sure that there aren't defectors within our midst. So, what's our status on Romania? Ooh, they are at 29%. Pretty good. We want to get them to probably, well, more than 50, I think, before we start the coup. And we've got more research to pick. Industry? It's not quite 1939, so getting that would be a little ahead of time. Let's go back to land doctrine. Get organization for all of our infantry. Very good. They fight longer, they fight harder. Anything at 50 is a disaster. 50 what? National unity? I can't take the Baltic states yet. I gotta get the claims first, and I can't do that until I finish the Great Purge. Uh, so modify government. We got another option here. We can get our material designer. This makes it cheaper and easier to get one of these things. Motorized artillery or infantry equipment. I think artillery... Hmm. I can't decide. How much extra research is there in the artillery tree? I think we're only going to do two infantry research. So let's do artillery as our... Get our designer for artillery. Because if you look, we're going to do these two, and then there's going to be a pretty big break. We're not going to worry about this one for quite a while. Uh, whereas artillery has one, two... I mean, I think it applies to all of these, to be honest. All right. Yeah, the zoom level, when you zoom out, it kind of centralizes everything into the middle of an area so that it's easier to see. Because if you were to try to figure out what was going on when you were that zoomed out, you have some problems. All right, so anyway, we've got everybody on every front. Now that we have this guy training, let's have him deploy to the Finnish frontier once he's done. How's our status on this? Motorized equipment's a little behind and towed artillery's behind, but our infantry equipment has caught right up. That's good. And let's take these mountain guys and merge them back with our strategic reserve. And while we're here, let's have the Finnish frontier start exercises. That'll give us more army experience. And it will prepare them for the war that is coming. Try playing turkey. I don't know. A KV-1 for every division. That's the idea. We want 80 of them for every division, though. So, I'm getting rid of these. This stupid NKVD one. These guys will be my military police. Uh, this is uh, light. Well, this is... Ugh. Okay, here's the first of our choices with the Purge. Despite Leon Trotsky being forced into exile, Joseph Stalin fears that he has a secret supporters within the party. So, we have to get rid of Mikhail Kalinin, but he is really useful. He gives us plus 15% national unity. That is incredibly valuable. I do not want to lose it. We also have this guy, Daily Communism Support. See, this is an easy decision. I don't care about a guy that can give me communism support. I already have communism support up the wazoo. I don't think I need to get... Uh, he's easy. And then this one's just, eh, political power. Give it away. But this one, if you choose not to do this... Now, now here's the thing. If I choose one of these three, it gives me a penalty for a while. If I choose this one, there's no penalty, but it says will lead to a civil war in the future. So I'm going to take this Khrushchev guy because I just don't care. Nikita Khrushchev, get out of here. Nobody cares about you. You're not important until much later. 
So you're going to be purged right now. Alright, so we've renamed that. We can give... Now, I think a recon company makes sense for our strong right hand. We need to be able to see what's going on. We need them to win. Joint... German Joint Air Research. Gains National Spirit German Air Innovations. Oh, this is our treaty. Now we're getting some of their research back to us. So we can get radar. Battlefield support doctrine, minus 10%. So yeah, I'm going to put a recon company on our strong guys here. Uh, an engineering company would be great, but they cost so much equipment. So much equipment. I might add them later. Artillery, we're already short of artillery elsewhere, but we'll increase that over time. So can we afford it? Not yet. Let's just add the recon company to start with. And then we're going to go to our motorized division and do the same thing. I want them to be excellent in combat. So I want to add a recon company. They also need some more punching power, so we will add the support artillery to them. Or we could add regular artillery to them later. I don't want to do that. I want to add regular artillery to them later. Because we're going to have an overwhelming firepower choice. But recon company to them as well. Just to start with. And... I would like to have some paratroopers. Would you guys like paratroopers? Engineering companies are essential to mobile units, you say. Because it increases their move speed through rough terrain. Ah, you make a good point. All right, I'll do it. You're right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right, chat. All right, we're doing that, but you notice right now, we are now, I think, going to be desperately behind on support equipment. Right now, a ton of it is going out to the troops. Our towed artillery is still really low, too. Support equipment doesn't have a lot of help. So what researches are going to be available soon? There it is. Okay, so we got our medium tank. That's the first medium tank. Now, do we start making these guys, or do we go for T-34s early? I don't think we do go to T-34s early. Let's start with the A-32s. I could now try to get some tank destroyers. Nah. I don't know. I think... We got Land Doctrine going. Let's get anti-tank or... Let's improve our artillery right now. We should be able to get to that other artillery fairly quickly and start building that instead of our crappy World War I artillery. Is that what we're, we're working with right now? Improved artillery. Better howitzer designs. Yeah, this is like World War I howitzers. So, let's get to that. I don't have the KV-1 yet. It's still uh, 532 days away. Support weapons are finished. Let's get uh, more offensive punching power for going after Finland. Uh, now we're going to have to keep making those purge decisions. Each time we get the officer purged re thing, our research time goes up, our naval doctrine research goes up, I'm sorry, all our doctrine researches go up and our organization goes down by 20%. Every time we get one of those purges, it's really bad. Yes, Vexar, YouTubers got it already. I can unpause here. Um, so, we're going to want some air support. And we've got interwar fighters. Let's send all of these. No, not all of them. 200 of them here. And their mission, should they choose to accept it. Even though it's going to be inefficient, is to go to the Finland zone here. And it's really, their, yeah, their mission efficiency is really low, but they're going to try to provide us with air support there. Oh, you know what? I think they're going to be much more effective if they're in Leningrad. Yeah, they are going to be much more effective. Not still fully effective... They're still pretty awful. Now we've also got tactical bombers from Leningrad. So we got plenty of room in the Leningrad Air Force here. Uh, the naval bombers. What the heck are the naval bombers going to do? I guess they could do port strike on the Finnish Navy.
But uh, yeah, we'll have air superiority from these fighters. The tactical bombers will give us close air support. I mean, they can also do strategic. Oh boy, another freaking purge. Oh, Tukachevsky must be tried in secret. That gets rid of him as a theorist. But that's not awful because he's a mass assault doctrine theorist. I don't care about him. But it would remove Alexander Yegorov as chief of army. He's an army defense expert. That's pretty useful. And the other guy grants army maneuver expert, which increases division speed by 10%. What else we got here? Reduces the naval, the air, don't care. Commerce rating, don't care. But Tukachevsky's one of my really good field marshals. And he would be gone. What's this? Chief of Army. He's an army reformer. Gives us more army experience gain. Eh, that's, that's good. But I feel like for Chief of Army, I like the division defense or division maneuver plus 10% better. And then a bunch of capital ship nonsense. Oh, but there's an armor genius that gives us 15% armor attack and defense. Oof. Damn it. This is a difficult decision. But I think I'm going to take neither and just click this to see what happens. Just going to see what happens. False documents and forced confessions are not proof. May lead, well, will lead to a civil war in the future. Let's see what happens, guys. Hashtag YOLO. That's right. I did it. Hashtag YOLO. Alright, now, our mechanized army, I also want to exercise with them so that they are prepared for the invasion of Finland. You guys, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I am Stalin, and I say it's gonna be fine, so just listen to me. We got this under control. Alright, what's next? We were looking at our air forces here. Back to air mode. And we've got... 500 fighters in reserve, which is good, but they're not good fighters, which is bad. Fighter 2s actually have the range to be effective in pretty much all zones. Tsarist Russia is going to come back, you think? Sweet Lenin tears. Alright, so we're at 4 speed... Once this is over, we can start going down these claims. And we'll get claims on Finland for free. We can also demand Eastern Poland. Or offer Poland protection from the Axis. We don't need Khrushchev to unite the party. We got somebody better. We got uh, this guy, Mikhail Kalinin. National unity plus 15%. I saved him before. All right, let's rename some of these divisions so that they're easier to understand. That's my strategic reserve, guys. And this is... You know, I probably should have more than one kind of infantry division. This one will be my standard infantry, and I'll make another one that's like a shock army. Okay, Trial of the 21. The Navy and Air Force have been getting off too easy so far, so we'll lose some political advisors. The Prince of Terror, I've never liked that. We haven't had to deal with foreign subversive activities. Uh, so, I don't mind this one at all. Chief of Air Force, that gets rid of air safety, all weather, and air reformer. Eh, those are good, but I could afford to lose them. Military high command, capital ship expert. Who the f Really? Okay. As we suspected, enemies are everywhere. Chief of Navy is naval reformer. Oh, I like the ground support air, su air force guy. I think I'll keep him. So yeah, this top one here, not worrying about that. So I will definitely purge those guys. Gotta purge them. 
Um, so now, I think I'm going to make a new infantry division. This is my shock army. And this one doesn't have any support artillery. Instead, it has a recon company, maybe. Uh, yeah, we want it to be as effective as possible. I'm going to put engineers on it later, but for now, let's put artillery, artillery, more infantry, more infantry, more artillery, more artillery. Yeah, we can fit an engineer company on here. That is the Soviet shock army. It's not done yet, but I'm also going to put like some uh, anti-tank brigades or uh, battalions on here as well. But I don't have anti-tank researched, nor can I produce it. So let's start building some of those Soviet shock armies, huh? And we also need something, like a lightning bolt? Is that a good shock symbol? I think it is. What else would be a good shock symbol? An arrow? A skull? Yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be happy with that. So, let's start training some of them. Stalinist Boogaloo. You want the sickle? The sickle? The unicorn. The most elusive. No, I'm liking the I'm liking the shock symbol. All right. So, we don't have a location for them, but they're going to be in the back here in Smolensk for now. Once they start coming out, then we'll be fine. Uh, so where are we here? We are still ahead in support equipment. I'm surprised. We did put a lot of engineers out there. Toad Artillery, however, needs everything it can possibly get. So the new military factories are just starting to come online. They're going to go all to Toad Artillery. We're still producing quite a few light tanks to throw in our reserves, which is good. But I want to switch over to medium tanks, actually. Um... We've got the A32. We can make a variant of the A32 before we get T34s. Ugh, I think I'll wait. I think I'll wait and just get T34s. We'll get them now. 220 days with this uh, ahead of time bonus? I think so. Let's get T34s and just be done with it. And screw it. Let's have the polls exercise, too. Let's get a lot more army experience going on in here. And what I'd like to do is edit this paratroop. We want some paratroopers, right? We got 7,000 men. Let's add one more. And now let's add some other companies here. We want a recon company. We're going to parachute some support artillery in to make them uh, extra strong. I'd also love to put some anti-tank on here, but yeah, I don't have that option. All right, let's get the timer moving again. We're running out of uh, experience, though. I just did a lot on that shock army and the other one. France and Britain announce an alliance. <gasps> a Japanese buildup, huh? Tensions along the Manchurian border. Oh, the Great Purge is over. So, let's see. Reports from our Mongolian comrades that the Japanese are massing forces in Halun Kang. Backing down may be seen as a sign of weakness. Let's see. We push back hard and have a 60% chance of a successful raid, or we can't afford another war. Japan gets national unity bonus in the event Soviet withdrawal. Well, I don't... I'm not a fan of this, but the communist China is doing pretty good. We push back hard. Let's see what happens. Successful raid! Fantastic. So we lost a bunch of manpower for some reason? 30,000 manpower, but he gained army experience. All right, so our purge is over, which means we can go down and try to get the Finns uh, situation figured out here. Alright, so we did get some army experience out of that, which is fantastic. How are our training troops doing? These guys are still either trained or green, so they're going to need to train for quite a while longer. Our mechanized, a lot of them are regulars now. We'll leave them going a little bit longer. 
The seven on the Romanian front, they don't need training. Uh, and our 26 on the Finnish frontier. Mm, a couple more days. Let's see. These guys, daily experience is 60% or 0.6%. So, yeah, another week or two and the rest of these will be trained. And they are this division, which is not a bad division. I don't want to edit that any further because it's just going to... Everybody, we got so many of them. All right, so we got infantry equipment done. Let's get support weapons done. We're getting close to a finish attack here. So what kind of t uh, things are we looking at? We're looking at uh, forest, 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 everywhere. Is there no way through... With plains? I mean, I should just look, right? There we go. Marsh, marsh. I mean, look, you can see this forest. These plains. I have idea. Where's my good army? My mechanized army of breakthrough. I will give you a new front. And then I will give you commands. No. Extend. And then you will get new commands. We'll delete this command. And then we will put one more. As soon as they get there, we want them to continue pushing through this open terrain to cut off anybody over here. That's our goal. So those guys will do this, and then this. Why would they go that far out to the left and right? We don't need that much. Maybe because I made this so wide. What if I bring it back down here? Then they put more focus on... Yeah. No, they still go way out there. That's so weird. What if I do this? They still go way out to the north. I don't know why. Maybe I just do... Okay, hang on. We got the Survivor's Coup. The foundation of the 4th International has reawakened Stalin's fear of traitors within the party and military command. Having seen the trials and executions of the Great Purge, many suspect another one is incoming. With so many gone, there's only a few under suspicion. Holy crap! The non-aligned supporters start a civil war? How many non-aligned supporters are there? There's none! Everybody's aligned. So one general left to start a civil war? Some survivors of the Great Purge have managed to seize control of some areas in the Union. The reign of the General Secretary, in the very least, has been destabilized. Okay, hang on. Slow this thing down. Uh, well, that happened. Officers revolt in the Soviet Union. We will come out of this stronger than we used to, though. Don't worry. So, oh, look at that. That's a big chunk that broke away. But they weren't, look, the non-aligned was so small. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> yep. I believe the correct response is you told me so. You're not wrong. Our, our little guys kept a hold of that. <laughs> Good job, guys. Uh, the good news is I think we pretty much have most of our military. I think we lost a few in the Finnish frontier. We lost a few of our awesome army. Turkish border patrol to the rescue. You know it. All right. So we're going to redeploy everybody. This is where the poles are going to come in handy. Our mountain troops are going to need to deal with the Caucasus. So they are going to go here and they're gonna essentially get this deleted let's see can we draw a border yes they can have that border and then their plan will be get through here as soon as possible 
Uh, why can't I draw an offensive line for them? Nope, I guess I have to just manually attack across the straight and hope that there's no defenders there. So the poles are already on their way over here. Yes, they're good. Um, let's get the mechanized army to push in from the north towards Stalingrad. Is that the only victory point they have? It is worth 30. Then there's this one down here. 5, 1, 5... Rostov is worth 15 and 1. What is their national unity? 70%. If we take Stalingrad and we take Rostov, we probably win. So I want my mechanized units to push in along that front. Uh, they're going to have a new front right here. All the way to the Volga. And their goal will be Stalingrad. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, fine. Yeah. And then... No, we're going to start over. Sometimes this doesn't do what I expect. That's what I wanted. Now we will... Carry this... Uh, let's see, can we grab this? Yep, yeah, that's kind of the path we wanted to take. And that's the ultimate goal. So now if we hover over this... You don't need to take both sides of the river, you jerks. Alright, that's fine. So 20 divisions assigned to that. I think we're going to give them the mountain army as well. We'll fold it into our mechanized force for the moment. Also, stop exercising. This is hardly a time for calisthenics. And the Finns are going to come back up the poles down here. And they are going to have a hard push for Rostov. And the poles... Well, what's their goal going to be? Their goal is probably going to be just to close this pocket so we've got a shorter front. Yeah, I think that's what we want. We want them to push... Uh, actually, um, they are not going to need to push that much, so we'll do that. Yeah, let's have them come north a little bit. So that's the goal of the Poles. That's the goal of them. The Romanian border... Nah, whatever. How about you come over here? Let's see what you can do. Along with these guys. Okay, so I think we might have this under control now. Let's see if everybody is about to uh, move. Yeah, they're all moving. We're going to need planes, aren't we? Oh, crap. Moscow has planes. Strategic bomb. I don't want strategic bombers there. No, no. Go back. Go back. We need tactical bombers. Kharkov. Alright, so we're getting a lot of fighters heading over there right now. The western step, though, I have no air coverage because I have no air bases anywhere near there. What are these guys going to do? How about these guys go try to capture this little thing? And you come sneak up here and grab these two. Let's see if... I don't have any... I don't know where their forces are. Do they have forces? Am I just going to literally... Like, I drew up this giant battle plan. I'm just going to waltz in there. I don't want to use the strategic bombers. Because that's the territory that I'm going to use. Those factories belong to me.
The Civil War system is pretty damn cool, you have to admit. The problem is, I don't think they got any forces to go along with this. No, they did. They definitely pulled, because I had 13 of my other things. So they, they did. They pulled small numbers of divisions from each of my things. They do have troops. Oh, we got research slot. Uh, let's see. I think we want mobile defense. 20% 20 20 defense for all infantry, and having elastic defense as a tactic is really good. Air wings with no mission. What are these guys going to do? Naval bombers. Um, bomb the Navy. Fighters with no mission. They can't reach here, can they? Extremely inefficient, but do it anyway. Can the tactical bombers reach all the way over there? Yeah, they can. So at least we'll have tactical bomber support over the western step. Oh, okay. We got some divisions coming. Might be infantry. Is that what it's saying there? Maybe infantry? Let's see what we can get for planning bonus. Uh, does everybody have a leader? Yes, we got leader. We got Zukov. We got that guy. And these guys don't have a leader, but that's okay. Get over the get over the straight. Let's capture the straight right now. ASAP. Because if they have a defender there, it's way hard to attack across the straight. Oh no, they do have somebody there. Oh, but we have an advantage. Why do we have an advantage? Because they have no organization. They had no time to prepare. They probably came in via strategic movement to try to get there fast enough. But strategic movement, you have lose all your organization. Oh no, but they've got reinforcements coming. They just had to hold out long enough for the better organized guys. Dang it. I think I'm going to stop that. I'm just going to hold. They're just going to hold there. Well, I can certainly explain the system if you want to learn more about it, Stormcrusher. I'll answer any questions you guys got. No problem. No problem. So we got them contained now. The Pol the Polish divisions have come over. They are in position now. We've built our, our little things there. Our, our strategic reserve is going to try to take Rostov. Our main mechanized force plus the mountains are going to try to take Stalingrad. And let's see what we've got for a planning bonus. We don't have any enemies. I'm just going to start this this right now. Let's activate it. Go. Where's the Rostov force? It's actually my Finnish force, isn't it? They can also go. And so can the Poles. The Poles haven't had time to build up much. And a lot of them are still strategically redeploying. But this is where I go. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, they don't have enough forces. Da. Look at that. Look at that, we're taking it. We're taking it. We can cut these guys off from supply. Although my guys are already cut off from supply. Ooh. Those poor Turkish border troops. There's enemies over there somewhere. We don't have any decryption at all, do we? We haven't researched decryption or encryption. That's why we have so much trouble seeing any of their troops. All right, well, close this pocket right now. Man, it sucks that this is like... These are my troops. These are my guys, you know? I have to destroy them all. So I want to take the capital and the cities as fast as possible. Everybody should be moving. Everybody should be moving. This motorized division can just go right there. There's nothing stopping you. I think if we take Rostov, which we're pushing for it right now, then we'll just win. No, you stay right there. You get off your stop. Go to here, too. What is that? That is actually three Astrakhan. But you know what? Oh my god, they probably took all of our oil production away. Because down in the caucus... Yeah, we only produce 54 oil now. We just barely meet the surplus. Modify government. What can we do? Chief of Army, what can we get? Army drill division training time is down. That's good, because we don't have a lot of divisions out there. Division speed, though. Army maneuver, we want that. We've got our, our tank divisions. 
What's the most interesting faction I have played so far? Well, I've only played Italy and Russia, or the Soviet Union, so go figure. All right, if we can encircle them, we don't want to attack. So maybe we can tell these guys to stop attacking. No, they're just going to keep attacking. I don't want to kill them. I'd like to just win the war. The motorized seem to be much faster than the mechanized. Because the mechanized are taking forever to get over here. Let's get the encirclement bonus going on him. Right now, we're not doing well. Oh, they've got reinforcements. Get there. There we go. Now we got some armored divisions coming in. Making the difference. Oh, do we get Rostov? We're almost there. Move in. Help them. Oh, we got everybody in reserve. We got pockets over here that we're closing. This looks like a cancer spreading on the map. That guy's moving up there. Can we get Stalingrad? Don't make it a meat grinder. We're going to attack it from every angle we can. Up, oh, they got reinforcements coming. What's the status on Rostov? Come on, guys. Do my do do my bidding. All right, we've got 72 width versus their 24. We got we got this. Rostov's going to fall. And Stalingrad's getting hit. It's green. Actually, let's take a look at the supply map mode. I'm just going to pause it so you guys can take a look at this. So, there's a port here. If we look at this here, this guy is not out of supply because the area he's in has a 4 with a uh, four um, supply points worth that it can support. And he's actually worth zero? Oh, because he's in a different zone? He's attacking? I don't know. Anyway, uh, this guy over here is also not using a lot of supply. So you can see if we do this, it's showing the arrow. Uh, and the way that it works is there's local supply that we've gathered from the areas that we control here. The victory points that you control give you more supply. So places with big cities, very good. Um, and then you can see the arrows coming from this supply thing here, which actually comes all the way from Moscow. And if we do this and we hover over this down here, it says... It doesn't tell us where the bottleneck is here, but it's probably a base. Ah, here's the bottleneck. You can see in red, when you hover over things, it'll show you in red whichever the bottleneck is. Right now, the bottleneck is this province here. Needs more uh, port in order to do it. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. I think it's pretty cool. I think I like the whole thing. These guys are going to make it to get in behind them. Speeding it up a little bit. Stalingrad will fall soon. Rostov is only a few days away. Three days away from falling. Now, of course, all of this freaking industry is going to get destroyed. Which is awful. 91, 92. I think if we take this, it's over. Russia versus the Soviet Union. We got it. And... Oh, it's so close. Is Rostov still up? No, we got Rostov, and they're still here. So we gotta find out what... We, okay, this is worth... What? 
it's not worth any victory points, then why? Alright, I guess I want these guys to... I had so many divisions that are getting destroyed because of this. My divisions are fine. The ones that I'm fighting are getting blown up. So I got those, I got Rostov, I got this one here to take, that's worth three. That apparently is worth nothing. Ooh, we got this over here for three. Why don't you guys just go there? I don't really have to worry about battle plans when there's nothing happening. There's no real resistance. I don't have to stop in winter if there's nobody to fight that's fighting me. I mean, I'll stop everybody else. I'm just going to try to take the last few things here. Huh, we got another encirclement here, but we I'm just happy to leave them in the circle. All right, so we're getting that. We took their other capital. Kind of, apparently. That was actually not a city. I don't know why. So what's left? They are about to surrender. Let me take this. Although somehow they have 30% more... terrain. There we go. Okay. So that happened. There was a civil war, Pryo. And we are looking much thinner than before, unfortunately. And we'll take out the mountain divisions here. Put them back in the strategic reserve. And give them their own army. So this needs a few more armor divisions, I think. Missing equipment production. Tactical bombers are needed. Ugh. Oh boy, I don't want tactical bombers though. So, go away. Ah, uh, you know what? Yeah, that was... Was that technically a war? Does it let me do lessons of war? Yes! Has had a war since completing the Great Purge. Good catch. I do want to do that. Thank you, David. We will forever be stronger. Yeah, you're right. Uh, infrastructure repairs itself over time. And it's all not damaged that much. I just don't care about the infrastructure in Kursk right now. Nobody's out of supply. Um, if there had been factories damaged, I might have worried about that. Okay, meanwhile, we had this whole plan, uh, but I need to deploy a few more armor divisions. It's because they're gone now. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, add a unit. Put them over here. Oh, that is the most annoying thing. When you do this, it should disable clicking on air forces and stuff, but sometimes it doesn't. Or maybe it doesn't ever. Uh, let's do that one. There we go. So our armor divisions are going to join that. We're going to get, um, two of those and two motorized. And both of those will go to our Zukov unit. Because right now it's at 20, so we're going to do a couple uh, quick runs, get them both motorized and armored. But we have some units that got a lot of experience during that fighting. I guess killing their own is what they do there. Alright, the Turks can go back to guarding the Turkish border. Good job, guys. Back to your work. These guys can go back to securing Sevastopol.
Yeah, so for those of you that are just joining us, we have an overall overarching strategic goal. I still have motorized on the Polish front. Where is he? Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll leave one motorized on the Polish front. I need to fill that in with some motorized anyway. Zukov can't have everything by himself. What's going on with Romania? That's a very good question. Romania is 40% communist now. Ugh, that's slowing down. I don't know if we should do a coup yet. We saw what happened when Daniel did a coup way too early, and it just got completely screwed up. I also want to figure out how to demand Bessarabia. In my previous... I mean, I've seen the demand Bessarabia thing happen. I see a thing that says claim on Bessarabia, but I've never seen the demand Bessarabia event fire, and I don't know how to fire it here. Because I did the molotov ribbentrop Pact, and that gave me a claim on Bessarabia, but I don't... I, I didn't have an option to, like, demand it or go to war. But maybe if you declare war on them, they will offer you Bessarabia if you don't. So we're in 1939. I think it's time to get weapons, too. I think we got to do it. And then we're going to have to switch over all of our production lines. Well, our one production line. Because we do have a massive amount of uh, infantry equipment there. Oh, Memel. Memel has been taken by the German Reich. So they're over this river into Latvia. So, June. June, we want to go into Finland. I think we can do it. Here we go. Okay, so we've got our purge penalty here. Uh, it was 40% division organization and a bunch of land uh, doctrine and stuff, but now it's, now it's down. It's down to 30%, and it's going to keep going down slowly over time. By 25th of June, 1941, which sounds like a very auspicious day, the officer's purge penalty will be gone. And it's gone, by the way, sooner than normal because we had that civil war. Because I chose not to purge some guys. You know, I could lend some of that infantry equipment to the PRC. That is a very excellent idea. Let's send them a little lend-lease. We have a ridiculous amount of basic infantry equipment. I could just give them a number, a ton of this. And then maybe I can send more of my regular... No, I, okay, they'll just have some of my backlog of basic... I don't want it, is what it comes down to. Uh, Navid Maza, the YouTubers across the world, all received pre-release copies. Not a beta copy, but a pre-release copy for marketing purposes. You can avoid all purging in a huge civil war, but your, your penalty... Your officer's purge penalty is bigger and lasts longer. And you lose some very good officers. So now we decide we add another unit here. And we're building our shock army in Smolensk, and it is way behind on artillery. But the artillery is catching up. Let's build another... Mm, I don't want to do another production line of artillery. I'm just going to change it over to the better artillery soon. Or maybe not too soon. Let's see what the difference is. Breakthrough goes up a little bit. Heart attack. Defense. Wow, defense goes up way higher. Look at that. That's a massive change. I gotta take that next. I gotta. KV-1, guys. This year. 1939. I think. 243. No. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mountaineers are still attached to the mech. I mean, I thought I fixed that. Thank you. Oops. No. There we go. What commander did we want to give them? Was it this guy? I think it was that guy. He's a panzer leader, but I think I have another one of those. I do. I have uh, a better panzer leader, actually. He can have another entire tank division uh, army once that starts getting built. 
All right, so now we're in the process of deploying some units. We've got some generic units going to the Finnish front to fill that out again from all the losses they took. Yeah, I don't think I meant to add them to the mech army plan. Oh, I see. This was a mech army plan over here. Gotcha. I really just want them to be my strategic reserve. Nope, where are they? There they are. Hang on, I see. A shock unit. Aha! So let's make a brand new army with him. Move it to the Western Theater. And give him a nice good general. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to use the Panzer Leader. Oop. Fate of Czechoslovakia. Slovakia has been declared independent. All right. Let's give him a three general without any traits. He can earn his traits soon. What is this seven? This is my Romanian border guys. They need something. Let's give them a bone. Um... I don't think I want to use the three general on Romania. We have two of them, though, so that's fine. We have three three generals, so we'll use that on Romania. Fine. Um, how long is the live stream? What time is it? It's 2.31. I plan to stop at 3 o'clock, which is a half hour. I don't want to completely screw up my schedule. And I will be back tomorrow at noon streaming the same game, the continuation, and then again tomorrow at 7. I'm going to take a break for dinner at some point, so I'm going to go from like noon to 4 and then take a break for dinner and then come back at 7 tomorrow night to continue this stream. Uh, and then Friday morning, I'll come back again and do one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Uh, probably not Friday night, though. I'm going to take a break from that. Uh, but half tracks to my army. Yes, mechanized. Not yet. Uh, we are... A little too early for that, and I'm doing a lot of research catching up because I spent so much time getting the KV-1s. So keep that in mind. Um, what can we increase right now? We can add... Go from light tanks to medium tanks? No, we're not done researching medium tanks. What can we gain for a while? I don't want to produce more light tanks. Let's produce more regular artillery temporarily. I'm going to be changing it into something else later. But for now, let's use our forces. Okay, so uh, I could go down Rehabilitated Military, which gives us better reinforcement rate and recovery rate, which is very good. And then Land Doctrine Bonus, which is also very good. I don't understand why you'd ever choose this. All it does is reduce subversive activities, which I think is people trying to coup your nation. I'm not sure. Excess T C26 is to China. That's probably not a bad idea. NKVD now more tightly. It improves reinforce rate, but it doesn't say by what. I kind of want to take this at some point just to learn what it is. Because, as they pointed out, I can do Lessons of War and get bonuses to armor research... That would get us our T-34s faster. But I'm already researching T-34s. That would get me even something even else. What else is there? That would get me T-44s. Jeez. Uh, okay, so that's all good. But at the moment, we can't attack Finland, and we need to attack Finland. Or somebody. We could get the claims on the Baltic, so let's do that. We want to attack Finland by the end of the summer. 1939. You think NKVD allows you to stage coups easier? I don't know. But uh, we're, we're, we're focusing on Finland right now, so we'll get the coup as we get it. Zog submits to Italy. Albania has fallen. So let's take a look at the faction map mode here. Italy has not joined the Axis yet. That's interesting. Oh, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact is coming our way. This will give us a ton of free things, actually. It will give us, I think, all of these claims for free. We don't have to research them. That's what happened last time. T-34s have been finished. We can now start production. So we're going to stop production on light tanks and switch to T-34s. Now we've got enough experience to get a nice variant of the T-34 before we start building it. Uh, T-34 Mark I. We give it a little extra armor. A little more reliability. 
and maybe a better main gun. That's not bad. That's 30 XP. Uh, more reliability would be even better because it would make it take less attrition damage in combat, so I won't have to produce quite as many. Hmm. And the armor went up by four. Can't decide. Can I do one more? I do have it. I can go one more. I think I'm going to go one more. It slows us down, though. Look how much it slows us down. I'm not sure that's a good trade-off. Maybe if we put an engine here. What is the engine trade-off? We lose our... What? We lose nothing. We just lose the penalty to our max speed. Okay. That's worth 75. Our reliability goes up by quite a bit. Our armor goes up a little bit. And our heart attack, soft attack, and piercing all go up. So we've got the T-34 Mark I, ladies and gentlemen. And we are going to start all hands production on that. Not a lot of production on towed artillery. That's all going to be switched out to the Tier 2 anyway. And now we need to look... Now that we have the T-34, we should start researching tank destroyers, the SU-85 that comes on this chassis, and the artillery, the self-propelled artillery to come with it. These are all valuable. No template that uses the T-34. Oh, you know what? We screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up. I can't edit my armor division to put T-34s in there now because I built such a great T-34 variant. That's fine, though, because I can't actually add the... I, I can't, I'm not going to produce them for a long time anyway. So let's go back to having... Uh, what is our Polish guys need to exercise? That'll get us some military experience, which is good. And now, who was it that said we should try to send some Lend-Lease over here? Modify the Lend-Lease. Can we send those excess T26s? Yes, we'll send them once, and we'll send them... 500? Yeah. 500 of our excess T26s. We don't need them. I don't think we can send volunteers to China. We send a diplomatic... Maybe we can. But I don't want to worry about that right now. Finland's on the docket. Alright. They want nuclear jet engines. I don't know if that's a thing. So yeah, China's holding out really well against Japan right now, actually. This is interesting. Japan sometimes does these naval invasions, and sometimes they just do a land invasion... And it's kind of impossible to tell what they're going to do when. Alright, so we come back down here. Romanian border is covered. Sevastopol is covered. This here, this base, that is a small naval base. It won't be able to afford a large fight, even if they do do a naval invasion. Okay, let's take a look at no, no, Romania. We are at 42%, and it's going up very slowly, I think. 0 0.02 per day is very slow. It might not get better than this. Not not discreetly better than this. We're at 40... Let's get to 43% and then we'll try to start the coup. And we'll be able to send uh, volunteers to help. We'll send over our strategic reserve uh, mountain fighters to fight in the mountains of uh, Romania. All right. And we've got these guys working on their plan. What's the actual main army's plan? Hmm. I think the main Finnish army, which somehow we have our mountain divisions inside. I don't remember sending them over there. Did I accidentally do that again? Yeah, there we go. Okay, fixed. Oh, and we got our shock army here. That's right. The shock army is supposed to have its own thing. I think I roped him in. So we gave the shock army a level 4, the panzer leader guy. Because we still have another one, I think. 
Yeah, we have the level 5 Panzer Leader, who's going to be our other mechanized slash armored army. You're right, I could have named it a T-3485. Still no encryption or decryption. You're right, that's awful. It's awful of me. Alright, mobile defense good. So our shock should deploy to where that guy is. Which is... Uh, that's the one shock deploy there. Now our shock army is shocking. Uh, and we'll give them a nice spade for our offensive forces. And our mechanized army also needs a spade, I think. I like using spades for offensive forces. Major offensive forces. Breakthrough forces, I guess you could say. Now the Finnish army thing makes a little more sense. Now where are their... Victory points. Are they all in the south here? Is it even worth doing anything in the north? I don't think it is. They have no victory points up here. None. They have one, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then 15 there in Helsinki. So here's the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. Non aggression pact. If we sign the treaty, we gain claims on a ton of stuff, and we don't have to research it. If we say no deals with the fascists... But the problem here is, if we sign the treaty, we cannot declare war on them uh, for two years. That's the problem. However, it's going to take us two years to build all those KV-1s. So it's probably not the worst decision in the world. I think I'd rather invade all these smaller nations. So we'll take it. Now, a whole bunch of things are going to come up. France banded communism, that's a different thing. So we already bypassed, what that's saying is we bypassed all of these. All of these already just happened. But you're right. Uh, I think that we definitely want our mechanized divisions to go balls to the wall for Helsinki. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. That was wrong. We wanted that to come from the other position. Okay. There. That's what we want them to do. Advance to here, then advance to there, then advance to there. Now, why is it... Oh, they're exercising. Talented new officers. There we go. Lowers the penalty. All right. Now, now we can go down rehabilitated military. Now we can get something here. Maybe an industry perk. Yep, 1939 industry perks needed. We can modify our government to give us... Oh, we got a theorist already. Democratic reformer. Let's get a popular figurehead. I hate seeing how low our national unity was. I know there's no template for the medium tanks. There might be now. Let's edit this division to give them two medium tanks. Let's start with that. There we go. So now they have two medium tanks, three light tanks, and four motorized infantry. The organization is unfortunately really quite low. If we put another motorized infantry on there, we can increase the organization by a little bit. If we change it to mechanized, that's even better. What are we behind on? Medium tanks. Yeah, our current production is 554 days. That's a while. So let's fix our production situation, shall we? Concentrated industry, number three. The breakthrough of that division is over 200? That is insane for breakthrough. I love it. You're right, their organization isn't high, but they won't be taking a lot of HP or organization hits because their breakthrough is so high. Their heart attack isn't bad either. All right, we need to start deploying more guys, right? I think we need to deploy some of these parachute tra paratroopers. Let's start training them. Oops. We could probably get them into Helsinki, right? Train them there. And let's also start training some more armored divisions.
They are going to be missing the things there, but uh, we'll put them in the middle over here at some point. Alright, shock armies. We can now add a bunch of them. That's good. And we can add more infantry divisions coming online. Yes. So, the main advantage of signing that is I got free claims way sooner than I expected. Which means, by the way, that we're about to start the war with Finland. As soon as that's over, that's when I'm going to bed. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay alone a little longer in order to do that. Um, let's see. Did we get Artillery 2 yet? We did not get Artillery 2 yet, so we can't switch over to that. We did get Infantry 2, didn't we? Yes, Infantry Weapons 2. This is gonna... <laughs> it's gonna reset that completely. And I'm gonna add, actually, another Infantry Weapons 2 line, because it's gonna take for freaking ever, for freaking ever, to get all of our infantry upgraded to Infantry Weapons 2, but when it happens, it's great. Our medium tank is at full production. At our current speed, medium tanks are going to fully get replaced in 512 days. That's not bad. We need to leave some space open for the upcoming... Oh, jeez, look, we almost finished burning all the way through all of that stuff that we set up earlier. Time to start some more. Don't put any factories near the border. It's bad. All right. We just queued up like another two dozen factories that are going to get added in here over the next few minutes. Well, hours or something. All right. And they'll go to the infantry weapons, which is good. All right. Our medium tank. T-34 Mark One, T-34 85 if you must. What's our trade situation? We're way behind in rubber for our motorized production. But how are we on motorized? We have more than enough at the moment. But I think we're going to get some United Kingdom help here. Not three factories, but two. Get a little bit of help. Speed up those motorized a little bit. Uh, actually, that hurt our fighter production a lot, too. Yeah. Let's increase that. So now our motorized are a little behind. But our fighters get full speed ahead. Okay, it's August. I'm gonna need to start this war soon. And let's prioritize reinforcements for now, because we're about to go into war. So new deployment's not as important, and upgrade's not nearly as important. Oh, you know what? We do still have light tanks in there, and we have a better light tank design. So if we have some extra, we won't put that at the top. Let's do five, and then it'll roll over to infantry equipment. I think that's fine. Where are we on support equipment? In good in good position. Okay. So, we don't have much left that we can change. Our main Finnish frontier is going to just push and try to take back here. So let's give them an offensive line. Actually, we can do this. Just take all of it. Just take it all. I know they don't have enough. Let's give them some units from the Polish army here. We're not going to need him now that we have that other situation under control. So there we go. We've given him a whole bunch. So now the Poles should be... Let's do this. There we go. That should help a lot. Our main division here. Oh, there's a war with Poland. And I think we're ready to do two things at once. We've got Romania at 45%. Let's stop boosting popularity and stage a coup instead. 
Now, where do we want to stage the coup? North Transylvania? North Transylvania looks a lot stronger there. Right? It's in the mountains. Good defensive terrain. All right, let's do it. It's gonna take how long? It'll be finished in September. All right. And we'll be sending them some infantry equipment. And we've got our mountaineers here. Poland has joined the Allies. World War II has started. Rehabilitated military. Military reorganization is going to give us some nice land doctrine bonuses. We'll get that soon. Look at that. KV-1 in 70 days, guys. 70 days. It's coming. I do need to kind of boost that coup before the second Vienna Awards. I did notice that as my uh, possible situation. Everybody just hang on. Where's this guy? Oh, they're on the Romanian border. They're asking for help. They don't need help. Romania will join our great and glorious common turn. Okay, I think we're ready. It's September. The, uh, the war. Oh, you know what? Did we see that coup isn't going to happen until 40, 1940? Yeah. Why don't we change... You're, you're absolutely right. We should use a different territory. I guess we'll choose this one. Doesn't really matter. Because, as you so correctly pointed out, the Transylvania Award is sometimes given to Hungary by Germany, so we can't do that. Alright, but let's go to war with Finland. Why do we have to... Oh, we just have to justify a war goal because we have to take claimed state. There we go. 105 days? Man, that... I didn't know... I thought when, once we had a, a, a war... Um, a claim, I thought we could take it automatically. But we, yeah, I guess it's going to be a winter war after all, guys. <laughs> oh, hang on. Once you start justifying a claim, that's what triggers the ultimatum things. That's cool. Okay. Cannot expect to withstand the might of the Red Army if we send them our demand and rightfully claim the land in Karelia. They might just hand it over. <laughs> They'll pay the iron price. I'll take. I'll send the ultimatum. We'll see what happens. We'll leave it in their hands. I want to get self-propelled artillery. It appears they rejected us, so we're going to war. Don't forget about Spain. What's there to refer... Oh, you want to try and get Spain to join uh, our common turn. Let's see. Invite to faction. Uh, they still don't like us enough. Uh, so let's try and boost relations for a while. I'm not doing much with that political power anyway. Questions finish sovereignty. Who determines the borders of a nation and how are they determined? Whatever way people may have found in the past to justify where the Soviet Union ends and Finland begins, we now live in a new era. The strategic importance of this border cannot be overstated. We are well within our rights to shift it to ensure the continued security of our people. We must rally behind this cause. Well, let's see what happens next. This is, this is an exciting. This is a ride. Finland rejects our demands? Oh, we just gained a conquer goal. Boom. Done. It expires in November? Yeah. We're going to avoid a winter war. Unless this lasts too long. But declaring war... We now get a conquer bonus, though. We don't get... Like... The claims. That's interesting. So conquer them completely. Instead of getting them to, 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 to give our stuff to us. Yes. Because we got claim on that only. And what does that have in it? It has eight slots, which is good. Five, five. I could definitely make use of all of these slots. Thirteen. Okay, yeah. Let's go with this. We don't need a justification anymore. Cancel. We've got the war goal we need. We'll take the claimed state, and then we'll take the rest. We'll puppet the rest, maybe? Here we go. Oh, gosh. This is going to cause them to join the Axis? No. No, it won't. 
All right, slowing things down a little bit. We are going to first start this army moving. And then we're going to start our... Let's see, which is it? Why are these in the different order? Mechanized army, here we go. We're going to start that. And we want it to be fast. Meanwhile, these guys, what are they doing? Let's try to keep them busy. Eleven divisions here? Go! Alright, let's see what happens. We're gonna win those fights. Holy crap, we're gonna win those fights. So what? Oh, they're running away. That's why there's no fight. They should not have rejected our demands. That's exactly right. So we're making gains everywhere. None of this nonsense where we lose the winter war. Alright? None of that. Oh, you know what I just realized? <laughs> okay. Uh, it might not be a problem yet, but I'm going to start training my military police divisions. And I'll put them over here at Volkov. And we'll add... Four units to it. Start them training. Because depending on how long this takes, we might need them. Oh yeah, those cavalry are getting chewed up by us. I do need some decryption, don't I? I can't even see what I'm fighting. Definitely need some description, but we're making gains. Cutting these guys off on the Corellia front here. Maybe not getting to cut them off, but... Going straight for Helsinki. That's all that there is to it. Making little gains here and there. We're not making any gains up there. That's okay. Don't care about that front, really. There's not much going on there. I'm going to finish the finish pretty quick, really. Yeah. Motorized. Standing around doing nothing. Why aren't you being a spearhead like you're supposed to? I mean, they were holding the borders, so there's that, but still. Question, why are the rest of our tanks going over here to secure the... F like, the rest, that's the job for the rest of them. I did have my Air Force set up in here. It was these guys. Yeah, we've got... So let's check out... Right now, I have air superiority. My air to craft detection is awful, because it's night. And because we don't have uh, the greatest... We don't have control of the territory... But uh, let's see the overall stats of the region. Uh, we have 347 fighters, 48 bombers, and they have no planes. But our, our actual efficiency is pretty low because it looks like there's a storm going on in there. Let's cut them off. Can we make it? Go, go, Gadget. Speeding, go. I think we did. Yes, spearhead. Let's see if I do that, if that... Yeah, that does kind of limit them. They go straight down that way this time now. That's better. We 
We've got those guys surrounded. The rest of the army is pinned up here trying to hold the territory. If I was the Finnish defenders, though, I would pretty much just, like, give up all of that territory and just fall back to this line. Because that's a fantastic... just a river across the whole thing. I mean, you could even just fall back to this line and use these rivers to block your, block me coming in. I couldn't use my numbers if they did that. This is the pre-release version. I'm sure there will be a big day one patch that adds more uh, bug fixes and things. All right, so it looks like I don't need to do too much now. We are just... This one thing just keeps keeping them in... No, get Helsinki if you can. Don't stop. They might collapse right now. Let's check out the war. Oh, we got Helsinki. Then we're turning around for some reason. I think we've just completely crushed them. We'll take the last two points here. Three points, and then they'll give up. Uh, 9,000 to 34,000. Yep, they are in trouble. And their national will is almost gone. Ah, let's try doing non-aggression non with Republic of Spain. Sure thing. So their interest in faction is minus 48, and after the non-aggression pact is minus 47. <laughs> that didn't help an awful lot. So... The Fall of Warsaw. You take the low road, and I'll take the high road. Finland offers, offers concessions. The war with Finland has been a costly affair. No, it hasn't. But as we may have been able to push back the Finnish army, we have been presented us with a compelling offer. We are giving control of strategically important areas, but need to withdraw our troops to cease further hostilities. We're just about to win. Let's see. We get Karelia, Salia, and Petsamo. I want Usama. That one's amazing. Savo. What's the other one? Aurelius, Salia, and Pesano. What? What? We get these two shitty little provinces? Strategically important? What do you mean? Where's this Salia? Wait a minute, I already control Salia. What do you mean I get owner and control? Oh, actually, they started with it. Never mind, I understand. Uh, but, um, why? There's no point. We need all of it. Soviet Union refuses. Oh, there we go. We got it. Just needed to take one more thing. Uh, so... Take all states. Now, we don't have the claim things. That's too bad. But anyway, we're just doing it. Boom. Done. Took them all. Annexed. All right, now, here's the problem. Everybody's like, what do I do now? Well, everybody else is going to line up. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take a bunch of these guys back. Put them on the Poland border. Then we'll take these guys, and we'll create a new border with this. And now we can try and demand this territory here. Let's see what happens. Take claimed states. <laughs> Missing equipment production for what? Tactical bomber. That's right. I don't care. I forgot. 
So what did we get? Uh, we got a couple civilian factories, a bunch of military factories. More civilian and military factories. Awesome. Big fan. These need to... They're, they're under construction. Okay. Yeah, that's the ones I already queued up. So, let's see. How many of them are damaged? Oh, just infrastructure. None of the factories were damaged, so I just took them. That's awesome. You know how awesome that is? Very. Oh, no. Oh, that's actually good. That's the puppet of Japan has capitulated. Good job, Republic of China. People's Republic of China. Keep them off me. If you keep them busy, then they'll never go after me. That's good. The Twitch chat is discussing the historical context. Now, hang on. Where's my Stormcrusher Battalion or a Division? How are they doing? They're in here somewhere, right? There it is, the Stormcrushers. They appear to be seasoned. Holy crap, they are very experienced. Crazy. So the Estonia event doesn't seem to be firing. We're justifying the goal. Why don't we do the same thing for the next one? Justify war goal for these ones. And Lithuania justify war goal. Take all the things. Military organization is complete. Let's continue to lessons of war. Because we did, we can do this two years potentially early. Although, no, technically it's just for the winter war. So it should have been one year early. But where are we on the KV-1? There it is! Poland is capitulated on the same day the KV-1 rolls off the assembly line. I love it. So, I want dispersed support. Line artillery are going to get plus 10% soft attack. You know it. All right, let's get KV-1 production. First, we can do a variant. Uh, armor, duh. Don't care how slow they go. Give them a little reliability boost and a main gun boost. Uh, let's see, another main gun boost. That lowers their reliability. I hate having low reliability tanks. Let's up it a little bit. There we go. Yep. Give them a little better armor, a little better gun, more reliability. So. Highest possible. And now we'll do another one. Highest possible. And every new factory is going to go to them. Uh, but we also need to stop production of... No, we don't need to stop production of Light Tank 2. What's our situation with upgrades vis-a-vis -vis Infantry Equipment 2? Ooh, boy. It's way behind, huh? I need 125,000 new infantry equipment to get everybody upgraded, so I don't want to take any away from what they're doing. They're only building some 80 a day, so what can I take away from? Artillery 1 is filled, and I'm going to be changing it over to Artillery 2 anyway, so let's lower that. We need every medium tank that we can get still. Motorized. Yeah, I think that's the best I can do, and then military factories will continue to come online for the next foreseeable future to increase our KV-1 production. I'm actually... <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm going to do it. Another KV-1 line going to the top because we need in everything. We need in everything. Did I? Hang on. KV-1 Mark 1. Oh, you're right. Fix. Got it. All right. What's the status of Romania? It's not going to coup for quite some time still. October of next year. So it's more than a year away. All right. <laughs> Storm Crusher, I've been there. I was doing that during the dev stream one time. 
Notice Romania. What's there to notice? Did they join the Axis or something? Why am I noticing Romania? Romania or Riot. I fixed the KV-1. People are still telling me to fix the KV-1. They're all Mark 1s now. Wait, whoa, what? Romania's in the Allies? Doesn't say that. What are you talking about? What you talking about, Willis? They do not appear to be in the Allies at all. You have to have a thing here. Look, if you look at France, they've got a thing that says that they're in the Allies. France in Allies with other nations. Romania is not in the Allies. Yeah, I know it's a lot of KV ones per year. <laughs> Ten per year. You have to give them time. This one's doing one and a half per week. A little more than one and a half per week now. You got to give them time to gear up. Advanced machine tools will help. So we'll concentrate in industry. And more factories coming online all the time. Let's see, we're going to have a bunch come online at the end of November. Five in November. Early December. Now. Aha! Oppress Estonia. Yeah, send the ultimatum. Let's see if Estonia is willing to give in. So we started our justification against Estonia. We got the event. Did Germany create Poland as a puppet state? No, they haven't given it to us yet either. Isn't that interesting? Maybe they have to finish off Danzig. I mean, it did capitulate. I don't know how long it takes for the event to fire and us to get control. I've got all these guys up here. Talented new officers. Excellent. Alright, let's bring them back for another strategic reserve situation here. There we go. Germany honors the pact. So I think we just got a ton of new military factories. And civilian factories. Right? Let's see. Military, military. Oh no, that's just open slots. Um, civilian. Welcome to the Union, comrades. Open slots. Jeez, did Poland didn't build anything in this. Well, of course Germany gave it to us. The whole thing has one... Yeah. Press Lithuania. The whole thing... has four civilian factories in it. That's it. I mean, civilian factories are good, mind you. But I was really hoping for some more military factories, if you know what I'm saying. There we go, now we're building three per month, four per month on that particular line. It's gearing up. Where's our KV-1 storage here? We have seven, seven KV-1s. Uh, let's see. Construction? I think we need to get some more, we need to go for the Stomovic now. Lithuania submits. We will save you from capitalism. So, we got this happening here. Yeah. So, what did we get from these guys? We got more <laughs> useful stuff from Estonia than we got from Poland. The fog. And we got more from Latvia. Latvia gave us better stuff than Poland. So now I'm producing KV-1s out of Latvia. Are you happy now, Poland? Are you happy? A wall of infantry. You know, I... There is a thing called the Stalin line. I think I finished it. It's in the tree here. Improve the Stalin line. It adds a bunch of forts, and you can see where they did by clicking on forts, and you see the, the light green are where forts already exist. Latvia submits, fantastic. So, I could build a bunch of forts, especially along this river is perfect to build a ton of forts, because it's just north-south river. 
uh, and then build another set of forts here along this river and just build tons of forts here. That's all possible. But right now, I have a very important job for my <laughs> civilian factories. <laughs> so, there's that. But, I'll queue some up. We're going to make Kiev a nice fortress city. Build a nice little line here. We'll come... We'll build this up pretty strong. Build this up pretty strong. That's a nice city. So yeah, this will be my, my uh, secondary line there. Where could we extend it to, though? Now, I mean, it used to extend to where these Baltic states were. I guess it has to extend all the way up here. Concentrated industry done. What's next? What comes next? Soon we'll see. Ah, uh, battlefield support, I think, is what I want. Detect their fighters better. Um, but actually, getting the next level fighter would be really good. The range on this is 1,000 kilometers versus 700. It's, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is an insanely useful amount. And I need to get start getting them soon. Yeah, the Stalinium <laughs> created KV-1s. We'll see. Wow, man, we had 300 people peak watching the stream? That's awesome. That's almost a personal best. Uh, we need the, the Polish front needs to move to Poland. We're, well, sort of Poland. Danzig is still holding out. Man, that's like... We've seen that happen a lot, where the Brits send a lot of reinforcements to actually help Poland, which is just not historically done. Alright, so now my infantry armies, when they're done, need to go and reinforce Poland. And I'm almost thinking the shock army should be getting some shock armies there. Okay, good. So now we have the capability to produce a bunch of uh, other things. Once these military factories come online for the KV-1s, we can produce artillery 2. That's good. And we can produce tank destroyers. I actually don't want them all the way at the top. Let's get two full lines of that going, and then we'll do this. Japanese diplomats in Berlin. Oh, no. Belgium joined the Allies, etc., etc. All right, let's get some production started on tank destroyers and self-propelled artillery so that we can add that to our armor divisions, and they will be just that much more powerful when they punch through things because you got to have the self-propelled artillery and tank destroyers. You can't use your toad shit goes way too slowly. So, I've got a doctrine under control here. Anti-tank. I do want to add anti-tank to my infantry divisions if I can afford it. Uh, let's see. Lessons of war. Research city experiment. Nuclear technology. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, I'm going to want to research that. It gives me research bonuses. Yes, the SU models are from the T-34 chassis. The Netherlands. So we're going to see France happening here soon. See, basically, if I do not say yes to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, I think Germany goes east first instead of going after the Allies. That would probably make the most sense. I could try to claim Bessarabia from Romania, but I'm trying to turn them against me. Or against themselves? I don't even know. 
Let's start justifying a war goal. Let's see if we can... Uh, what's the other one? Oh, that one. I believe, historically, only Bessarabia was given to him. That's probably what they offer as part of the ultimatum. But I'll take Bessarabia if they'll give it. Because the coup in, in Romania is really... Let's speed this up again. The coup in Romania is really just to keep them out of the hands of the, the uh, Germans. Alright. We have another research slot open, and I think we're going to hit the nuclear tech. Boom. It's 1940, bitches! Yeah, you're right. Encryption and decryption have to be next on the list. Uh, but I think, sadly, uh, I need to get to bed if I plan to pick this up tomorrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. At noon. So I'm sorry, guys. I know uh, everybody was very excited. But I'm trying to keep my sleep schedule a little bit sane. It's 3.30 in the morning here now. So... Uh, yes, noon is when we will be back on this channel. You can find the full events if you go to uh, gaming.youtube.com slash soundstrategynetwork. I think that link works directly. Yes, it does. So I'll post that link in the chat here for you if you'd like. It'll show all of the upcoming streams on there. So, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. A lot more to come in this particular stream, and if you miss it tomorrow, you can pick it up on the YouTube channel as well. Those will be posted there. Whew! That was a long one, and it's very exciting. We had a civil war breakout, which we were able to contain. We took over Finland in the Winter War instead of losing to them. And uh, the purges weren't that bad. I think we're in, it, we have Berlin in our sights, is what we've got. All right. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.